need to say all the other crap there. Well, Julio would appreciate the tribute you gave him at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Julio. And there was one other tape that we played to that let me, lets me know that we're really getting close to Christmas. Thank you for listening. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. You know, Elvis uh, said that from his heart. You could tell that he meant it when he said it. Oh, sure he did. <laughs> oh, thank you for listening. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Christmas. Thank you for listening. Will you Elvis? We'll talk about Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jack. That's <laughs> Rand. Get me some girls up here. <laughs> and have them wearing white cotton underwear. And, you know, my mama was hanging the laundry. That's what she used to wear. <laughs> and that's what I want. Where's my in <laughs> And my naked statues. Hey, look, I got a hole in one of my studies. <laughs> Let's go in the backyard and fill the swimming pool with Polaroid cameras. Hey, look at that scatter frozen to the pole outside the backyard. <laughs> then we will shoot the flash bulbs and make a technicolor beautiful landscape. I'm going to say I'm impressed by the wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> it will please me greatly. What I'm supposed to do next? Yeah, Elvis will talk about Christmas. Says here, Elvis will talk about Christmas song. Hey, Rob, don't we have a big Elvis show coming up? We do two big uh, Elvis. I like to call them tribute shows a year. That's right. when he, uh, the date of his birth and the day of his death. When, which one is coming up? We will observe yeah. Elvis's birth on January 8th, which is, I believe, just as you get back. Ooh, oh, beautiful. Look wonderful. forward to that. Yeah. That is a good way to come back. Great. Hello there. Dynamite Show. That's a great way to start a show. Thank you. That was the ghost of Elvis Aaron Presley. Oh, and I've just been handed another book. Is this another author wants to come on the show? Yeah. The Unmaking of Elvis Presley. Mm. Airless Love. Boy, that's a big one. That's a thick one. I wonder if this is a book that... Is this a book that's positive or negative? Charles, let me ask you, Charles Broyhill, being our producer, and I know you've already read the book. You would have handed it to me if you hadn't read it already. He's a voracious reader, Charlie Broyhill. Is it yeah. positive or negative, Mr. Broyhill? Yep, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> Way to go. And you, you got that from your reading of the book? No, I got that from reading the cover on this uh, press kit. Ah, the press kit. Yeah. Would you, think it, would you think it would be more favorable or more negative? Negative. All right, well then... Let's book this guy for the January 8th show. Because, you know, as you pour through that book, there'll be something in there. Because Elvis perpetually gives the gift of comedy. You know, how long has that ever been dead? By like 20 years or something like that? Almost, yeah. Every year we find out something new about him. What year did he, didn't he die in 77? Oh, 77, Mike. So he's been dead for... for 21. 21 years. Oh, 21. Oh, 21. 21. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike, how you doing? Hey, buddy. Hey, you, you big uh, high rollers. I was watching uh, ESPN this morning and they're showing the uh, World Series of Poker. Mm. And you know who the commentator on that is? One of the Van Pattens? Yeah, Dick Van Patten. Yeah. You gotta invite him to play poker with you guys. You know, he's you to watch him. you're the second person that's called with that, and we actually think it's a good idea mm -hmm. to call Dick uh, next time we're in L.A. Because, I mean, that would be, he probably loves any excuse to play poker. He seems like he's very knowledgeable. I was just watching some of it just before you guys came on the air. And imagine if he had some of his Hollywood phony friends come over, like Jamie Farr, <laughs> <laughs> Louis Nye. Of course, Norman Fell couldn't play cards no, with us no, anymore, but no. uh, maybe Don DeLuise will. <laughs> Hello, Don of my show. He's a big yeah, buddy man. of Don DeLuise. Hello. Yeah, what's up? Hey. Boy. Hey, Bobby. Yeah, hey. This is the guy. You guys ever seen... This is the guy. Is hey, that him? Absolutely. All right, thanks, Mike. Yep. Good radar. Yeah. Yeah, big time. It's, it's, it's usually second or third call, too. Hello, Don of my show. That was my score. Hello, Don of my show. Hey, I'm from Wisconsin, from Wichita. Yes, hello, sir. And we heard this morning at your old blast from the past, Eileen Cunningham, whoring herself out. <laughs> Eileen. Her name is Eileen. Eileen. Mm -hmm. Where did you hear her, sir? She was on another radio station. She is giving away Christmas presents, or Christmas packages. I, I used to receive those for free from her. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Eileen's a very nice lady, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish that her son would get the message mm -hmm. that Eileen's time on this show is no more. Uh, that sadly, uh, you know, we've... We've parted, I hope, as friends. Oh, I think we have. The Donna Mike Show and the Cunningham family. All the Cunninghams. <laughs> Cunningham. Allen and Randall. Richie. <laughs> and Howard. <laughs> I was Richie's dad, then. <laughs> Howard Cunningham. <laughs> Joni Cunningham. Joni Cunningham. All the Cunningham. The Richie Cunningham that kicks for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be king of the Cunningham. You're king of the Cunninghams. You've been studying. Please tell, um... The Cunninghams, the Wichita Cunninghams that were 
sadly, we're out of our carving phase right now. <laughs> now, we uh, we don't want any psychics or any mind readers on the show for a while. Just like to provide you with some good, solid comedy. Hello, Don and my show. Hey, Don, you have the munchies? No. This. There they go. It's always the guys that actually have so much time that they just wait. They wait till this hour. And, you know, I'd be bitter, too, if I was gamefully unemployed. Hello, Don and Mike show. What's up, Don and Mike? Hey, Baldy. How are you guys doing? We are doing great, thank you. Hey, do you guys know who Mick Foley is? He's the, the guy who plays Mankind in the WWF. No, sir. No, you don't? He's the leading vote-getter for the time, Man of the Year. Oh, does that some internet thing where you can vote on the internet? Well, yeah, you can do that, and I think Tom is picking it, too. Well, I hope that if it's open to the public, and that's the only way that an idiot wrestler would be the number one vote-getter, right. would be if it was something on the internet, or if he lived in Minnesota. I would urge our fans, really. I would urge our fans to vote for Dennis Murphy. For Dennis Time, Murphy. Time Magazine Man of the Year. Dennis ought to get that going on his website, too. <laughs> vote for me for Time's Man of the Year. <laughs> Would that, be the funniest, either. would that be the funniest goof of all time? And use the same picture that's on the cover of his CD. <laughs> in his brief. In his underpants. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Yeah. This is the Waz from Silver Spring. How you doing? Yeah, nobody beats the Waz. Nobody beats the Waz. <laughs> yeah, hey, Waz. <laughs> hey, happy... Last name's Zoo. <laughs> Waz up. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> hey, what, uh, while you guys go away, is it possible for you guys or Rob A to, like, play shows from five or six years ago? No, I like keeping it current, sir. Rather than the newer stuff, man, because it's like, we've heard it before recent. Too we've bad, man. All stuff. Too bad. Sorry. No, you mean too bad. No, too bad. Yeah, too bad. Our, you faithful listeners that listen while you're away. Appreciate the fact that our listeners listen. There's new stuff. There's on new the, stuff there. On the rare times that we get vacations, we appreciate the fact that you guys listen to the best of. Right. Well, no, it's it's been an editorial decision that's been made that the best of that we play is always like within the last six months, so it's kind of current to whatever we're doing now. Kind of updates people that uh, might have missed some recent episodes. And plus, you write and stuff, you know, stuff from four, five, six years ago that we haven't heard in ages. Right, and you know what we that also. Please hear me out on this. You run that stuff, and you know what? Then if it's like some old bit we were doing, like eat my cheese or something, then yeah. we we come back from vacation. We got a hundred people calling about stuff we did five years ago. Well, then you say uh, no old stuff, you know, when you come back. No! Now, you know, the, the most frustrating thing was to come back from one of those vacations and have someone call and, uh, and tell me that uh, if I ask me if I'm feeling better because I just got out of the hospital. <laughs> like when we used to run the thing with Mike being uh, hospitalized. No, this is actually the calls from on my vacation. Are you all right? That's yeah. an editorial decision that's already been made. Well, so. you know, there's something else you could do. Don't come back. <laughs> what? Are you are you that are you that angry, sir, about this? No, I'm not. Are you that this angry, are you that pissed off? Looking about... for something new, you know? Looking for something new. We're here right now, you son of a bitch. Hey, who are you calling the son of a bitch? I'm calling you a son of a bitch, you bastard. You bastard. Man. You bastard. You bastard. Just, enjoy, stuff, just enjoy the show. I love Don't the show. worry about it. Don't right. worry about making decisions that aren't up to you. Don't worry about it. Get the big bucks, you know. What? I'm, you're getting paid the big bucks. What like the hell does that have to bucks? do with anything? So, let's have some new editorial decisions here. You listen to the people. See, what you're, what you're, no, you are not, we listen to the people. We simply don't listen to you. To you, you don't count. Listen, it's no, uh, it's no skin off my nose. The people, we the people of the United uh, States. Yeah, listen, America, you're one son of a bitch. <laughs> come I'm, on. Doesn't matter to me. Listen, do me a favor. Don't listen during the two weeks that we're off for Christmas. You're a big pain in the ass anyway. Who needs it? Yeah, so are you. Come on. Now nah, you are. You're the supreme pain in the ass. Do me one more favor, okay? Nobody's no. going to give you any Christmas no, presents not, this year. No. Nobody is going to give you any Christmas presents. And we're not doing you any favors. I you don't get any presents. favors. You don't even get to talk anymore on the show. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Jesus Christ, Queen. Happy holidays. God. God damn. You know, what What a nerd Poindexter. It's go, go, go from a flood year, Mark. Go from a 1994. No, listen, that's an editorial decision that's already been made. Right. I think it's a smart decision. Mike thinks it's a smart decision. Yeah. Rob thinks it's a smart decision. The people that run the think station think it's a smart decision. Mm -hmm. There's one guy, one angry guy. And you know, you don't make your case when you go, Hey, don't come back then. <laughs> Jesus. He, first of all, I know. you know, he's arguing his point, which is basically run stuff from a long time ago so I can enjoy because I've listened for a long time. I'd like to hear it again. And then, don't come back then. Bitter.
Hey, the answer to that is buy a tape recorder. Sure. Start tape at every show, then you can listen to all the shows you like, man. You wouldn't be the first one that's done that. That's right. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, Donna Mike. Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, always it's, this way. Okay. it's always this way as we wind down. It only took ten minutes for you people to, to beat my spirit today. <laughs> Congratulations. I came in here on top of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank the you. The world to you. Thank you. Hey, I have one thing for you, man. What, man? Merry effing Christmas. Right. Same, same to you. I think that guy ran over me in the mall today. When I was in Hex, I think the guy came by me and just like, you know, I stopped to say something to my wife. Seriously, I stopped. Have you ever been in that Hex over at Fair Oaks Mall, the one that... Uh, Fair Oaks Mall? That's where the theater smells like vomit. Okay, you know you know how in the aisles at Hex, they, uh, God love them, uh, they're trying to put as much holiday merchandise as they right. possibly can, so they've put so many tables on the floor that the aisles now are enough uh, for one person to get by, and that's yeah, right. that person's Ally McBeal. <laughs> yeah. So they put the other... And so I stopped very briefly because I saw a funny-looking person behind the counter that I wanted to point out to my wife so we could laugh at them. And, uh, well, you know, that's, that's what Christmas, Christmas is all about, man. Normal Christmas right. activity. So I stop, she stops, and then three, count them, three people, literally pushed right by, walked by us, like elbowed us by, without any word, any, you know, finally this, this old codger comes by and goes, nah, like with his elbow in my ribs, and I said, Jesus Christ, like at the top of my legs, and then Laura looks at me and she says to me, I don't say that, I said, look what he just did, Merry Christmas, <laughs> he goes walking away, you know, still, probably didn't even hear what I said, just going, <laughs> I like throwing the H when I'm really mad, <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, maybe he would have stopped if I said that. And did we ever forget what the H stands for? Harry? Horatio? I don't know. Herbert? Just emphasizes it. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Perhaps. There are three people in a row. Just, excuse me. J-H-C. That's what I should have said. Hello. Hello, Don. Hello. Hello. I'm calling from Wichita, Kansas. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Favorite state. Love Kansas. We love Kansas. I know you do. I know you do because you talk about it bad so much until it, it, it is something that you really like. We love okay. It. Let me please stop you right there. When have we misspoken about the fine state of Kansas? Well, I, I, you really haven't. I said you talk about it all the time. I didn't say you misquoted it or no, no. misspoken it. You, you, you said we talk about it bad. I heard you. It, oh, you, you have said, did I say that? Yeah. Yes, yes, you did. You have it on tape. Oh, God. Anyway, well, I'm not even calling about that. What I'm calling about is what, what is going to happen to the radio station and your life when this year 2000 crunch comes along and we all need to save food and, and store... All right, listen. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to show you something. That this is like... You're a, you're a, like Helen Cunningham, like psychic, a psychic. Ooh. Every day I write down a couple things that I want to talk about at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk about bombing Iraq. Right. I'll be getting into that in greater detail. Mm -hmm. I got news about George McFly. You see, I wrote that down, Mike. Mm -hmm. I wrote down. I want to thank our listeners for the great month of ratings. Mm -hmm. And Mike, will you please read? Look at this now. This is like a Karnak routine. What's the first thing up there at the top of the post-it note? Year 2000. People flipping out. Not just computers. Stocking up on food, guns, and generators. You're kidding. That's the top of his list, ma'am. I swear to God, it's on the top of his list. I cannot tell you who this is because it will embarrass my wife. Because You're it's, kidding. Because it's a friend of my wife's family ah. that's uh, actually flipping out about that. There are people that are going absolutely ballistic. There really it. are. This really guy. Are. I had a girlfriend that is, was telling me about it, and it's like, what do you mean? You know, I'm thinking only the computers are supposed to be going down and problems no. with the banks. And Listen. You know, like, nobody's really saying all of this. The guy that I know, who I'm not allowed to talk about by name, has bought the other person that I know, a generator, has also started stocking canned food yes. in her basement and has equipped his son with many different types of firearms because he is convinced that when the, the, the clock rigs and it's right. the year 2000, anarchy will rule. Well, all I know is when that problem <laughs> hits, you will be safe because you'll be able to stay with your mother-in-law. Because she has the generator that you bought me for my first so, time. So when you're there, you know, and you're, you're shooting the guns at people, like if the zombie's coming at your house trying to get your food, you'll be able to thank me. Yeah. But here's the question. If... Let's say that anarchy does happen and society falls apart mm -hmm. in the year 2000. If you got a generator, 
Oh, where are you going to get the gasoline? <laughs> oh, by the way, something. <laughs> Why do you care? This is true. I just, I was very concerned, and I didn't know if the crazy listeners out there were aware of it all. So. No, just crazy members of my wife's family. Oh, oh, all right. That's all. And I actually did some research today, mm -hmm. and I found out that in the year 1899, mm -hmm. people reacted the same way. Really? Now, of course, they didn't have computers that were going to crash in the year... 1900, right? right. But, but what did the, why did they react crazy? Because they thought that it was going to be Armageddon because it was the end of the world. Mm. And the same thing happened. People stockpiling, stockpiling supplies. People stockpiling, uh, stockpiling uh, weapons. Mm. People barricading them in their, in their houses. People were afraid to leave their homes. Well, stockpiling barrels of saltpeter. <laughs> hey, do you think it's a necessity to do these things or do you think this is crazy? No. Yeah, it's freaking crazy. Are you kidding me? I think the people that are doing that are, are, are nuts. I mean, they're the same thing with the Armageddon people. I think there are going to be some computer failures because these com certain computers aren't going to be modified for it. But these people, I saw a guy on the news that had a compound with a with a barbed wire fence surrounding it right. on top of a mountain. He had an underground bunker. He had stockpiled yes. freeze-dried food. Give me yes. a break. Yes. It's compound W, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, those, people are, those people are certifiable. And I'm gonna, and incidentally, I'm gonna tell that person when I see that person over the Christmas break, mm -hmm. when we'll be playing great best of mm -hmm. from the last six months, because that's the right way to do it. Right. I'm gonna tell that person that I think he's a nut. That's good. Yeah. Good. For doing that. He got a gun. He got a gun too. Oh, you, you yeah. do not. You do not believe that uh, with the all the computers that that are not being worked on right now. That no. it's just like a chain. That the weakest link. Is no, no, no. Listen, problem. honey, honey, listen, please. Stop worrying about this. Well, yeah. in, in any business that's going to fail, I mean, I mean, I know it sounds oversimplified, but I mean, you're, you're as good as your nearest AC outlet. Mm -hmm. Unplug it, okay? You know, write down the figures on a piece of paper yeah. like they used to do in the 1800s. <laughs> right. I mean, if you do your banking on your computer, mm -hmm. if you're really worried about it, go back to do it the way you did before. You had a computer. Balance your checkbook yourself. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, like if you're turning on your computer and you want to get on the internet or something. Mm -hmm. I don't care if my computer thinks it's 1800. The only guy that I, that, I, that I have a lot of faith in is a guy that I think, I think he was on 60 Minutes, and he is the guy that said 14 years ago to these computer companies that you might want to take this into account, right? And now he's pissed off, and he's legitimately pissed off. Mm -hmm. Not for any other reason. They do have to modify these computers, but as far as, you know, the, the end of the civilization is we know it, please. I'm telling you, there's this guy in my wife's family. <laughs> really? He, now he's not officially a member of the family. I, wanna, <laughs> I just don't want you to think that. He's not an immediate member of the family. He's one of the... <laughs> Through sharing people in the family. I'm well, looking forward to that. Adam, I, I want to let you guys know that I, I, I get really nervous around 2 o'clock when your show comes on and I'm not around to turn it on. So I just want to let you know I, I enjoy listening to you. I, I am kind of a closet listener because if anybody comes home that uh, uh, or anybody comes around me that uh, I don't think can appreciate it, I cut it off. I don't know why I'm embarrassed. But, uh, you, know, but I uh, you should be proud. Listen, be proud. I am proud. I am proud. I'm a proud listener, but I am a closet listener, and I don't know why. How old are you, honey? About 60? Oh, at least that. Oh, God no, God bless No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not? I'm not. I'm about 45. 45? Wow. Are you a smoker? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. You want to guess the mileage on this woman and how many times she's had her tires changed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess that odometer. You know that what? odometer has gone and clicked over I, twice listen, already. Listen, I called about the year 2000. I didn't call for you guys to get on me. Oh, we're just having so, fun. I know you are, and that's what I love. But you can have fun with some of them other ones. Uh, all right, yeah. all right honey. Have a good day. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Her New Year's resolution is to cut down to three packs. Bye-bye. <laughs> She brings up a valid point, though. There is no reason to flip out about the year 2000. I wanted to talk about that today. And I think people that do that, they're, they're a type. I mean, they're the same type. Oh, yeah. They fall into that survivalist category. Absolutely. Too. I don't understand people who think they're not going to be able to find food on January 1st yeah. in the year 2000. What? Uh, well, well by you see, <laughs> if the computers crash, uh -huh. <laughs> the computers run the electricity, right. and they run all of the stuff at the stores. Mm -hmm. so the stores would not be able to open. You would not be able to go and get the rent. Ah. Which is why now you can buy canned peaches, <laughs> I used to buy carnation dried milk, and prepare to kill anyone coming into your yard. <laughs> That's the part about almost that, that just whacked me out today. That's the real humanity part of it, you know. Prepare. Stock up on some guns. My four family members will be safe, but I will kill anyone. You know, that. Ah, my right. God. There's a truck coming down the street. Dad, it's the mailman. I don't care. Shoot him. Shoot him right now. Shoot him right between the eyes. Junior, I taught you how to use that shotgun. 
It's the year 2000. <laughs> the thing that scares me the most is if it ever came down to a war between the haves and the have-nots, those of us who don't believe in guns won't have any. <laughs> and the other guys will. <laughs> now, okay, we're screwed. I might buy a firearm on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Next year. 1999. Yeah. Like the morning of New Year's Eve, you know, just walk in and, you know, maybe like develop a little twitch. And I'll just be going, I'll just look at the guy and go, hi, Y2K. Y2K, I'd like your most powerful handgun, please. See, if I ever really got flipped, I hate guns. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine ever having a gun. Right. But if it ever got to that point, mm -hmm. I'd go right to the demon. <laughs> yeah. We got a gun expert here. So, uh, you, you know, and he's not allowed. I don't think he's allowed because of his uh, his time that he spent in prison. Yeah. I don't think he's allowed to, to have them, but I think his wife... His wife know. owns like 300 <laughs> guns. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Yeah, hi. Hey, I wanted to change subject real quick. Uh, I heard you guys talk to G. Gordon Liddy about his uh, calendar. Yeah. The, you guys kind of popped me into buying one, and uh, well, good. I'm sure he thanks you for that. Well, I got one complaint though, man. Where do you have to go? The dog pound to get some of these ugly things, man. Now behave yourself. Well, you, know, you check out. You check out the girl. You check out the girl wearing the black see-through from South Carolina. She's solid. Well, I believe that was either April or May. What happened to March? That's a man, man. <laughs> I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the calendar with me. I can't comment. <laughs> I thought all the girls were very hot, and it was nice of you to purchase one. I'm sure Mr. Liddy appreciates that. I hope he will put that on the store credit for me <laughs> for the day that I do need a gun. The cover girl's nice too, and that you know when the. Uh... We can't talk about the cover, but the uh, that cover, that controversial cover, very nice. She Hello. Has a, she has a gun. Don, am I show? Don. Yeah. Hey, I want to let you know I got the voting process started for Dennis Murphy. Oh, is that an online thing? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure thing. What is it? What's, what's the address for that, sir? Do you know? Uh, Time.com. Time.com. Or urge all of our listeners to vote. Dennis T. Murphy. He's got Time Magazine, Man of the Year. Would that be a great cover? You know they'd animate it. <laughs> He's got some pretty tough competition there. Oh, and listen, you got to know that no matter how many millions of votes anybody gets, right? you know, that they're going to rig it. So and they'll do whoever their favorite guy is. Yeah, it'll be, uh, well, who would it really be? It wouldn't be Clinton. It's already, Mark, uh, it would be Mark McGuire. I have read that it's already been narrowed down to three, that it will either be Hillary or Ken Starr, and if that whole thing goes Hillary's screwy, not a man, baby. And, and if that the whole thing goes screwy, then it will be Mark McGuire. So it's Hillary, Ken Starr, or Mark McGuire? This is what I'm reading. Mark McGuire's at number nine right now, followed closely at ten by Jesus Christ. So. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd be a he'd top three vote getter, I think. Yeah, write in Dennis Murphy, please. No problem. Log on like a million times. I'm sure you got nothing better to do all day tonight. Just keep logging on and voting for Dennis. No problem. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. One more call, and then I, I do have this uh, little scratch pad of stuff I want to talk about. Hello. Mike. Hey, hello. Hello, Mike. Hi. I have a question. Would you recommend a beard and mustache trimmer for my beard? You have a beard, ma'am? Down there. A beard and mustache trimmer? Yes. Or down there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, you just take the uh, take the trimming attachment off it and use the uh, metal end. The money metal end. Money metal end. The money metal end. Money. Sure. And then, uh, you know, send us a few pictures. Okay. Before okay. and after. Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'd be a great Christmas card, wouldn't it? Santa. You know, I mean, you, you really, well, especially if you have, like, white hair now. If you're albino and you have white hair down there, because you could do a Santa thing. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you go, Merry Christmas. Santa is all puckered up and blowing you a kiss. I love that. I love myself. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Hey, uh, Jesus H. Christ stands for Jesus Holy Christ. Well, perhaps it does. Makes sense. Yeah. The next time I talk to the J-Man, I'll ask him. Very good. Okay, and uh, Dennis has got my boat, too. All right. Man Thank you, here. sir. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, how you doing today? Hey. Change the subject a minute. I wanted to uh, ask you about when your when your parents do stuff to you when you're a uh, kid, does it change you the rest of your life? What kind of stuff, sir? Well, I was having supper with my father the other night, and he brought up something that happened when I was a kid, and it's kind of kind of got on my goat, and it's been bugging me. What did he do to you? How old were you? Well, he said I was about five, and he said that he was he had bought a, a ball and was outside with me, playing with me, and uh, asked, trying to get me to catch the ball, mm -hmm. and that uh, I couldn't catch the ball. And he, was, uh, he, he got angry with me and uh, punished me. Yeah. Well, how did he punish you? Oh, uh, it's a typical, you know, spanking type thing. Yeah, so? Yeah, well, I mean... So he, I so you were unaware, were you unaware of the fact that he had spanked you for not being able to catch a ball? Uh, no, I didn't remember it. Oh, and then he reminded you and now you're angry about it? A little bit. 
I mean, it's kind of... Oh, I kick his ass, then. You're a grown man now. <laughs> Pardon me? Kick his ass. You're a grown man. Hi, can I ask you a question? How do you do it day in and day out? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here wrestling with this. And Top of my head, like... Bingo, there's the solution. The solution. It's right there on the tip of your tongue. Mm -hmm. First of all, I can't believe that someone with a serious problem like this... I'm going to guess you're not a goofy caller. You're serious. I can't believe you would call me and Mike two total dumb skulls <laughs> to ask us about that. Well, no, I'd like to laugh, and you guys make me laugh, so I wanted to kind of get another look at another kind of idea this about it. This has obviously really bothered you, that, that somehow, like, over dinner, your father said, I remember you were five, and you no, couldn't I'll... catch a ball, so I, I spanked your butt. No, I was telling him about the difficulties of raising up my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm raising two kids, man. And he, was, he was trying to give me a, 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 a guiding light to uh, be a little bit more gentle with the kids and, you know. Well, I would agree there. You know, don't, don't, don't ever hit your kids. Oh, no. I, if he's telling you to be more gentle, with... he's telling you to be more gentle, but then he, so that's why he brought up the fact that he spanked you. He, and... said, it, he said it had been bothering him for years. Mm -hmm. Did he do anything else besides spank you? Uh, I, I don't believe that, uh, you know, his, uh, his intentions were anything but good. You know. Was he clothed when he sang? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are right. I appreciate the call. I, mean, I appreciate you guys giving me some feedback. Now well, we're just trying to get the repressed memories. You know, the stuff you might not remember. You know, the stuff that Roseanne loves talking about. <laughs> Was he wearing an oversized hat? Uh, probably. He's, uh, he's got a, a resemblance to the G-Man. Mm -hmm. In that area, uh, I don't know what the connection is there, but uh, the baldness thing. You know, you got to wear a hat, or you. I think more like a sun, sunburn, a sun hat. Speaking of the G-man, <laughs> can I get uh, somebody there who can send me an old no, picture? No, no, come on. You are so, oh, if you were here, I would spank you if you were here. For goodness sake, you were like all over. You guys too would be great. I can see why your dad beat you. <laughs> Just let me say that. I, I commend your dad, father of the year. Should have hit him harder. Following that conversation was like trying to kill a roach on a kitchen table. All right, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Christ. And another thing. Uh, can I tell you I'm a woman? Hello. <laughs> oh, I don't like Joe. Hello, Don and Mike. Homo Joe here checking in. How are you? Hey, Homo Joe. Hey, somebody was just calling about uh, trimming their place with clippers. See, I told you it was a good idea. Right. <laughs> what can we do for you today, Homo Joe? Well, yesterday you were talking about Tom Cruise. And if you remember, um, Rosie O'Donnell, she talked about him. You know, she's in the family light. So yeah, listen, uh, Joe. Definitely family. We know that Rosie is a homo. And we also know that Rosie talks about Tom Cruise, so people won't think that she's a homo, because most people don't think that Tom Cruise is a homo. What's we... funny about it is that it's one homo trying to prove to the American public she's not a homo by saying that she's got something for a man who in reality is a homo. <laughs> do you follow what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I do. Yes. She's, she's more a man than Tom Cruise. I would agree with you. So, Homo Joe, you also are a subscriber to that theory that uh, Tom Cruise may, in fact, be gay? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's been seen in a few clubs. Oh, he has? Yes. Yeah, oh, sure. Well known fact, Mike. Okay. Well known fact. That's right. I forgot you have the file. <laughs> yes, the B. The H file. The, the file. And then the H for GH is homo. You know, God's homo. Oh, 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 Jeez. What about them bucks? And incidentally, if you want to get it right, identify the show properly. It's Al Nipple and Victor Anus. Oh, I apologize. It's not, it's not Victor best. and Anus. What about the bucks? I'm calling from Tampa. What about the bucks? Good team. Uh-huh. What about the skins? Bad team. Uh-huh. We don't lay anything on it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. Not unless, so good. not unless you want to bet on the right skins. <laughs> okay. All right. That was a good call. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. There you go. It was very quick, but he had he had lots of issues. Hello, this is on my show. <laughs> Hi, uh, I, I did have an answer to the G Jesus H Christ uh, uh, question. The H stands for Harold, as in uh, our Father who art in heaven. Harold, be thy name. Uh, 
It's a joke, Mike. Oh, my God. Don oh, Mike. That's why I was laughing. Don Mike show. Hey, I was wondering, uh, Don. <laughs> yeah. Are your kids uh, into the yo-yo thing that all the kids now, it seems like on the streets and in the malls and everywhere, in schools, everywhere? Just... Yes, my kids, um, all my kids, uh, my illegitimate kids. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my uh, my two kids from a previous marriage are, uh, are into the yo-yo thing. You know them, Tom and Dick's mothers. <laughs> right. Tommy's, re Tommy's really into the yo-yo. My son, really, seriously, my son, Tom, is my dad. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> yo, yo, yo! I have a plan to make money off this. Yo, 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 yo. I have a plan to make money off this. I'm a school teacher. I didn't know the kids were into yo-yos these days. My oh, kids you didn't not know in, that? No. For real? No, really, my kids not into yo-yos. Well, kids are into yo-yos nowadays. If you In Baltimore, I live in Baltimore. There's kids everywhere on the street. Watch out for those TV guides, man. They're huge. They'll eat you. They, they are big in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. But listen. I knew. I'm a school teacher. You're the best school teacher in town. Thank you. But anyway, listen, you got to hear this. I have a, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, yo-yos away from the kids. The yo-yos. Yo-yo, then, you know, there's nothing like here, in, and you're from Baltimore, you're an original Baltimore, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm actually, you're not? I'm from Ocean City. Oh, 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 oh very different. Ocean City, you might as well be from Baltimore. Baltimore. They screwed you guys over taking you off the air. And the air. Season. Are you teaching children? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, God. <laughs> what, what grade? Uh, fourth grade. Okay, so anyway. So there, well, I have I have so much to say. First of all, Johnny, get off the playground. <laughs> Time to come back in. We're going to learn about yo-yos today. <laughs> today we're going to talk about cow. I can tell my friends I'm getting busted by Don and Mike. <laughs> cow ripped in the obios. Now look, let's say this is science class. This is Pale, one yo-yo. This am is I, the baseball, the another yo-yo. And these are the best two things in town. <laughs> now, Johnny, what's the worst thing that happened in the history of the world? <laughs> Can you tell me, little Mike O'Mara? I didn't know, teacher. I was playing with my yo-yo. I'll tell you the worst thing. When the coach... Left town. <laughs> That's right, teacher. Robert say What a wing. Now, repeat after me. Yes. F. F. Ursay. Ursay. All my students say it. I ever F. 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 Ursay. Ursay. Very good. Thank you. You're the best teacher in town. <laughs> oh, no. Watch out for them TV guys, dear boy. I'd like to say you're the best group of fourth graders I've ever had the pleasure of teaching. <laughs> And I'm going to give you all the yo-yo to play with over the holidays. Saying Merry Christmas. Now let's go to Pulak Johnny. <laughs> for a foot long. <laughs> Happy day, fourth green. Yes. I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? We can really get going on Baltimore. Oh, we'll try. Well, okay, okay. Well, let me ask you real quick. Okay. I, I'm from Salisbury, the Ocean City area. Right. My friends are very, very upset that they yanked you guys in the off season this year. Mm -hmm. And what? I'm just wondering, are they going to? Are you going to allow them to bring you back in the in the uh, summertime? Will we come back to Ocean City? Is that the question? Yes. As far as that, I don't know. Not the Las Vegas style show, which I was at at Secrets, mm -hmm. but the. Um, well, listen. For everybody that's in a town that we've been uh, booted out of for whatever reason, format change or ownership change. When we make our new deal with our new syndication company after right. the first of the year, that's going to be our first goal is to get back to lots of the cities that we've been canceled in. It, it was wrong because I, I heard the day that you guys were talking about how they took you off in the off season. Yes, I you for the summer, and then once the fall came, that, yep. you know, and it was that you were on They enough. used us like a toilet. That's right. We thought that they were the best folks in town. Is that how I call it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. You try to, you know, low key that around the fourth grade. A little deeper. Like best, a you're the best teacher in town. Cal <laughs> <laughs> in the O's. And O's, Natty Boo, Pollock, Johnny, you know Baltimore, Red Pigs. You know what's even worse? <laughs> I'm a Browns fan living in Baltimore. I'm Browns fan. Browns. I'm bigger than the Orioles. It's the Browns. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. I think that went well. Teacher of the Year calling the show. <laughs> I'm an 
educator. <laughs> Come here. Have you guys noticed about yo-yos? Get off the playground. I want to come back in and learn. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah, hi. We got to go down the ocean, hon, and get in the water. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, you said. You sound like you were born and raised in the area. Nope, Ocean City. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same difference. Same thing. <laughs> oh, cow. Oh, man. That's where all the people from Baltimore go to the ocean. Hello. Hi, Don and Mike. Yes, sir. Hello. Turn your, turn your, radio, turn your radio down, <laughs> Hon? Hey, listen, Hon, I'm from Palmer, too. You guys got it right on. Hon, <laughs> that's the best word in Baltimore. Hon, it's a two-syllable word in Baltimore. Hello, Hon. Yeah, the best one, though, is Paramore. <laughs> that's what you cut the lawn with. Paramore. Yeah, and while you're doing it, you drink your natty bow out of a spare fame cup. <laughs> That's great. Natty Boo. Thank you. Natty Boo and Krebs. Okay, gotcha. See you later. Bye, guys. All right, goodbye. <laughs> oh, now we wasted all the time with the first three. Let's, let's do a, a stop set here. Good idea. There's a touch tone. There's a touch tone to scream at me. Listen, Hong. Call in right now, okay? Caller 100. Let's hope it's a caller from Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. 1-800-636-1067. Caller 100 will give you a man-made prize and qualify you for Friday's Big show when we give away $5,000 to one person to pay off all your Christmas credit card debt. Critics say it's the best contest in town. <laughs> this is the Dawn and Mike Show. Big time, major market radio show. Hello, and blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. You said it all right there. We're killing a rack. Yep. I'm very happy about that. Be talking more about that on today's show. Because as we speak right now... Like three o'clock in the morning, there we're right. bombing the crap out of them. Yeah, air raid sirens, uh, missiles going off, anti-aircraft all over the place. Uh, you know, but the downtown, I guess, uh, certain areas downtown, they're having. I heard earlier weddings. weddings. Yeah, well, Thursday's wedding day in Iraq. Isn't that oh. a kooky country? <laughs> Nutty. And uh, all the TV people on top of the roofs, they're very upset because we're bombing the southern part. Of Iraq today, <laughs> uh, not, not so they so they can't see the bombs go. Right. Pretty crazy correspondence you have to be. You know, like, I wish the missiles were closer. <laughs> you know who is just the fugliest is that uh, Christine Amapanur. Uh, Amapanur, CNN. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She's very busy over there right now. What's with that hair? I think it's not only when she's over there, man. I mean, I've seen her. She's on 60 Minutes and stuff. She has, I'll say this, she has a very Middle Eastern look about her. She has, it looks like the, the her hair or bangs or whatever it is is kind of like glued to her forehead right now. Maybe that's because she's wearing the helmet when the uh, missiles get close, right. but I'm not sure. I saw one of the news babes on NBC wearing a flak jacket. Yeah. You know, they're making a big deal about that. <laughs> After that ABC camera got hit yesterday, all the correspondents were wearing uh, army helmets for a while. And I think that even the guys in the studio, Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw... <laughs> <laughs> they should all be wearing fatigues uh, and helmets. Helmets, yes. I thought about wearing my fatigues in today. <laughs> Your fatigues, but do you have a flak jacket? I do not, Mike. We uh, don't. I do not. I think, uh, you know, we could use those for this show. I decided, uh, instead of wearing my fatigues to today, wear my Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey in. Congratulations. You're a very handsome one. Thanks. You know, it's, I'm just sitting there looking. I really had two outfits out. <laughs> oh, my. The bed in front of me. I thought, do I wear my Army uniform in? Because, you know, I've got that flight suit that the guy from Wichita sent me. Yes, yeah, so right. That would be appropriate for the military actions. Do I wear the flight suit in? Or do I wear the football jersey? If right. I my wife, what should I wear? What and she say? said, well, don't wear the Army suit. You're not in the Army. I said, I'm not a football player either. <laughs> what you ought to do is you ought to plan it out every week. You know, you ought to just have a week's worth of clothes. One day, it's the Army suit. The next day, the football uniform. Then you can be the construction worker, the policeman, and the Indian. <laughs> you know, the one right, right, right after the other. The other thing that cracked me up is that yesterday we're doing the whole thing about Lieutenant Colonel, the Brigadier General, yes. the E-2 Private. And at one point, I said I was going to send out the USS Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Right? Send out Jean-Luc Picard and uh, Lieutenant Worf. Mm -hmm. I got home last night. I turned on the TV. What's the name of our biggest ship over there? The USS Enterprise. The Enterprise, one of the biggest carriers, I think the biggest carrier we have over there. Right. Right. So we're kicking ass and taking names over there. Over and, uh, of course, we will be reporting on that uh, throughout today's show. Today is the day we're going to tie up all the loose ends. Yes. Good. Because tomorrow is the last show before Christmas. I brought my wrapping twine in today. That's goofy and nutty. Mm -hmm. Your wrapping twine? Yes, keep it with me all the time. Wrapping twine. The way they used to wrap packages in the old days. Rob's not in his head. He remembers it. A little twine that he had. You know, back in the days before those fancy ribbons. To tie up the loose ends. Right? Yes. Yes, I have a big right. ball of twine in my back pocket. Did you get it at the mercantile? I got it down to the mercantile. <laughs> also bustle. Also bustle. Also mercantile. And some spices. Oh, really? Yeah. Excellent. Did you have to trade for those spices? Yeah. Traded Bieber. 
Straight at Beaver Phelps. Beaver. I'm just glad it's been a mild winter. Yes, I remember Beaver. <laughs> okay, now listen. Hold on. Before we get too goofy, we're getting, you got to get seriously mad for a second. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so everybody get on your mad face right now. Um, this is about our station in Sioux City. And first off, I want to start today's show with an apology. It was very rare I do this. Everybody better get the tape recorders rolling. Roll it. But, uh, we're recording. A couple of days ago. Well, most folks, most folks. <laughs> a couple of days ago, a guy called the show and said, hey, I heard a rumor that you're being canceled in Sioux City. And I just lit into this guy and said, hey, we have a 20 share there. Right. There's no way they'd ever cancel us. Right. Right. And I told the guy to go F himself. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows? Maybe he took my idea and he did go F himself. But in case he's listening, I'm sorry. It just turns out your information was correct. Well, if you can succeed in doing that, that is an enjoyable activity. So I would if I could. I think every man would if he could. <laughs> I'd, do the, I'd do the other thing if I could, too. Well, wouldn't we all? Well, I think if I was a hermaphrodite, I might try to have sex with myself. Well, if you weren't a hermaphrodite. No. You mean like there would have to be in... Yeah. Real butt? Yeah. And he's no. Like, so when you tell him a guy, you know, to do that, there's only one thing you're telling them to do. You're telling them to... to you, you know that he knows that you know what he wants you to do. <laughs> My answer would be negative, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be doing that. However... If I was all bendy like Morton Anderson of the Atlanta Falcons, right? Well, then maybe I would do that other trick. I'd do that in a heartbeat. We heard a story that the field goal kicker for the Atlanta Falcons can actually bend over and give himself a monica because he's got such total flexibility wow. because of that kicking leg. <laughs> he's an athlete. You see those guys punting and uh, and kicking, and you see that follow through when their their leg goes straight up in the air. Right? They they have that kind of flexibility. I guess they stretch all the time. Imagine that though. <laughs> Imagine, what if you sit at home doing that? All the door opens and the family comes to dad. And you go, oh my God. Sure. <laughs> Look what daddy's doing. I wasn't doing, I wasn't touching anything. Oh, yeah. All behaviors. You'd never leave the house. All right, listen. I get divorced. There's no reason to be married if I could do that myself. <laughs> For goodness, I think a lot of guys I know probably wouldn't be married. It's the greatest, oldest joke in the world. Why do dogs do that? Because they can. I, I love that joke. <laughs> so listen, the guy calls in today and says, Sioux City, I heard a rumor they're going to cancel you. And I, you know, told the guy to go scratch. Sure. Well... I'm so pissed at this. Let me Why you, I... Oh, do I, you... Clem's coming up. Ooh. Okay, first off... <laughs> this is why... Exactly why we're busting the deal with Westwood One. Okay. Because right now, the way it stands, stations, for whatever reason, if they want to cancel us, they just cancel the show. And Westwood One doesn't do jack about it. They don't care. We're, we're just one of 60 shows that they have. So this is exactly why... We're canning our deal with Westwood One. Now, going beyond that, I'd like to point out, we've been on this station in Sioux City, KKMA, for a couple of years. Maybe three years now. I think it's uh -huh. been about three years. And it's one of our big rating success. Now, it's one of our smallest markets. Sioux City is like market number 250. But it's been such a success story, and we do get a lot of calls from Sioux City, and we've got uh, great success there. Yeah, we've gotten the ratings back. And we've had, I'm not exaggerating, over a 20 share Which in the ratings. Incredible. Uh, unheard of. So the guy calls yesterday and says, hey, I understand they're canceling. And I said, well, there would be no reason they would cancel us. Mm -hmm. Well, i got to give a shout out to um, Mike Feathers, who is the general manager of Stephen Truck Equipment in Sioux City, Iowa. Okay? He's a guy that advertises on our show. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, this pisses me off that we've done nothing but do a great show for this station. Sure. And they've gotten great ratings for the last two years. And you would think that if they were going to cancel the show, even though it's a bad decision, that they'd have the balls just to tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they said to this guy. The guy writes Neil Art. You're done. The rumor is true. KKMA is dropping your show as of Friday, December 18th. Mm -hmm. I'm a loyal listener, the general manager of a large business here in Sioux City, and I advertise on your show. I would rather you not use my company name. Well, oops, too bad. But I will include it as well as my true name and phone number so you know this is for real. Some clown called your show Tuesday and said, I have insider info, you're losing Sioux City. I ignored the jerk like you did. However, my advertising review came up today with the station assistant manager, and I cornered him on this deal. After bull -assing me for quite a while, he let loose with it. It seems another local station has dropped their oldies format, and KKMA, as of Monday, is going to be another oldie station. Mm -hmm. Just what we need. However, they are keeping anus in the morning. The assistant manager told me they're notifying you guys by mail on Friday, so when the crap hits the fan, you are on Christmas vacation. Ooh! That way you cannot oh, oh, oh. hammer them until they are long gone. Oh, baby! This gentleman showed me the new lineup promo cards and swore me to secrecy. Hmm. 
I know you do not believe me. And that is why, in true Don and Mike style, I stole one of the lineup cards. <laughs> I have taken the liberty of faxing this to you as well. <laughs> At least now you can have two days to blast these jerks back to the Stone Ages. I have already told them I will do my advertising over. There you go. Yeah, now there's right? a loyal average, the kind of advertiser well, we like. Thanks, Mike. Why the station will try to F us like this? I don't know. There's not, you know, when we've delivered and with that, you know, we have done the one thing they want us to do, and that's mm -hmm. deliver the rating. Yeah, huge, huge rating. Huge. So before they pull the plug on us right now, I want to tell all of our listeners in Sioux City to call this goddamn station. Call them right now. Right. And tell them you know what they're going to do, and you are pissed. There you go. Call them on the business line. Ask for the general manager. Ask for the program director. Ask for the sales manager. They were going to try to sneak it by. They were going to try to slither on into the night. No guts. No balls. Oh, this is just a pisser. Right now, there are things they play a box of records. They're classic rock right now. They're going to change the format to oldies. Lollipop, lollipop. As you can see, it's going to be oldies 99, good time rock and roll. Now look at they got a whole a goddamn uh, presentation made up already. Um, and listen to some of the crap that they're putting out. Fab Four Fridays <laughs> features tunes, trivia, and background information about the Fab Four. This is what they're replacing us with. Yeah, because America doesn't get enough of the Beatles. Afternoon trivia quiz. Hourly at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and 6 p.m. Beatles archives. Song of the day. All requests and dedications. Cruising USA. I'm excited already. For lovers only. And, of course, the always invincible, programming-wise, Motown Monday. Yeah. I cannot believe it. Here's what gets me. They go through this whole thing on this sheet they're giving to advertisers, saying that it's going to be a personality-driven presentation of 1960s oldies. Oldies 99 will attract adults 25 to 54. This all-important, middle-to-upper-income adult audience. This audience is the audience that we have already delivered. Yes to KKNA. We've delivered in vast numbers. Mm -hmm. We are already number one. Right. Adults 25 to 54. Right. Yeah. Good reason to change. This is why it doesn't make sense. The 25 to 54, all important middle to upper income adult audience is broad enough to include both young consumers building their careers and financially established mature listeners seeking investments. This is the exact same kind of crap that you could put out about the show that's on this station right now. Mm -hmm. Today. Yeah, I mean, it's a number situation. It is the question of that demographic, 25 to 54, where we are, no lie, number one. And I'm, I'm truly incensed by this. What they're really going to get with the, the oldest format, right, is people 49 and over. That's exactly right. I don't know who listens to this crap. And all the stuff that they got. Motown Monday, <laughs> selected tunes about Motor City monster hits, song of the day, a special song is selected and played. The listener who calls when the song is played wins a prize. <laughs> Cruising USA, cartoons, car-related songs, and backseat music to bring back that cruising feeling for lovers only. Mm -hmm. An all-request show featuring dedications and anniversaries. Listen, I don't care. Do this crap on the other hours of the station. But why you would take off a very successful show... Yeah, I mean, do whatever you want during the other hours here, but, I mean, this is going to be doomed. I mean, they're really going to, to lose the audience they have. We have worked too friggin' long to get a loyal audience in this city. Now, I know that Westwood One will do nothing about it. Now, Westwood One, as it turns out, knows nothing about this. But what a surprise that is. Uh, Since the station... Well, no, the sta you can't really blame Westwood One because they don't know yet because the station's keeping this a big secret. Uh, it's only because the advertiser gave us the information. They were going to try to uh, torpedo us there when on we Friday. were on vacation. Yeah, send us a certified letter tomorrow that would arrive on Monday oh, oh, oh. since they know we're on vacation next week because it's, it's Christmas. Christmas. That is so completely slimy. Right? That's so totally bass backwards radio. Oh, it's so stupid what they're doing anyway. It sounds like they're embarrassed about it and they didn't want anybody to know they just wanted to go ahead and do it. Listen, I don't know if listener calls will get them to change their mind. I really don't know. I will tell you this, that uh, Monday, the station we were on in Burlington, Vermont, another very small market, mm -hmm. canceled us because they changed format. They went to country. Stations changed format. That the station mm -hmm. received over a thousand calls in two days. Right. They call back today. They're putting us on one of their other stations starting Monday. Bingo! Right. It works, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. It really does. It works if you call, if you write letters, if you let these people know. They want to hear from you. They really do because you are the only ones that they're... You know, when they're sending out this, this PR crap, that's what they're talking about. And I'm telling you right now that this is bad 
business. Right. They came to us. They picked up the show. We said, great. We're glad to have you as an affiliate. We'll do anything we can do for you guys. Had a lot of winners in Sioux City. We've had a lot of attention with Sioux City. We've had a lot of calls from Sioux City. Delivered big ratings for them, which incidentally is our part of the deal. That is our part. That is our really our only part of the deal. You put the show on it, we promise you'll get big ratings. That's then it. we're both successful. Right. Now, it's not like they can say the show hasn't been successful because the show has been and is successful. Mm -hmm. They don't even have the common decency to call us up, to call our network up, to say, listen, we're dropping the show. Right. They got to do it like this. Pussyfy. You know, you have a... I, I, Think about that. Think about the people running this station. It's like a head coach that's got a, uh, a player on his team that uh, is number one in the league. And he walks up, and the, the, the day of the game comes, and he puts him on the bench and doesn't say a word to him. Puts him on waivers, cuts him. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't tell him. And doesn't explain it. That wouldn't happen. These are the type of people that are running the management of KKNA. These are not, I'm telling you, these are not stand-up guys. Beyond the fact that this is a bad decision, and I, I, I don't understand the rationale behind it. This is just not the way you do business with no, somebody. Man. You know, I, I hope we're still on in Sioux City so we can alert uh, the other stations in Sioux City. Yeah, that, that's uh, starting Monday. Yeah. We're totally available. Absolutely. And we'd love to hop on to somebody else there because we were we were going to be blindsided by this. And now this is our only opportunity to tell the good people of Sioux City, you know, we, we want to get on somewhere else. Christ, do you think KKMA is using that lame excuse that they can't sell it even though they've got the ratings they've been able to sell it? I, I don't see how you could, bud, because when, it, when, you, when the show delivers a 20 share yeah, right. in the ratings, right, it's pretty impossible not to be able to sell a 20 share. And the fact that they're going to keep anus in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, they're keeping a talk show already. That's what I don't get. With no ratings. Right? Yeah, yeah, with no ratings. Yet, we're the guys that are going to get canceled, and our listeners... Our loyal listeners, and we have no problem at all with whatever the stations want to do when our show's off the air. It really doesn't matter to us at all. And we can work, and we have proven that we can work on any station with any format. It works. I don't believe we're on a classical station. That might be an exception to the rule. We're on an oldie station. We're on country stations. Yeah, it works. We're on talk stations. Mm -hmm. For goodness sakes, we're on a lot of sports stations. This is just ridiculous. I mean, this is this is so bad. This is this is like everything that's wrong with radio. Do we give the phone number out of this uh, radio station? Uh, it's area code seven one two five four six four one two one. Very good. The program director's name is Dave Rudin, and I'm sure he's a very rude man. This is a Rudin awakening right here for us. That's for sure. This is a real kick in the balls. I, I mean, can't this... believe it. You know, it's one thing when you know you're performing adequately or in an average way. Right. It's, a, it's an entirely different thing. <laughs> when you're number one, you say to yourself, "What the hell?" <laughs> you know, the old adage, "Don't fix it if it ain't broke." And beyond all of that. How about just having the decency to let us know? You know, and not not even for us, because we know that you will F us because you're in radio and you have no feelings. Do you care at all about the loyal people that have made up the audience of our show that one day you're just going to turn the, fl the switch, flip us off, and, and just we're not there anymore? A lot of people. You know, I think of those guys on the tractors that are calling us when they're in the middle of you know, plowing the right. North 40. For God's sake. Really, I urge... All of our listeners, really, we got to rally the troops now. This is important. This is this one we are taking personal. I don't care if this is market 250 or this is market number 10. Right. Yeah, I don't care that it's a small market. I really don't care. I'm just it's I'm, the principle of the issue here. I'm sick of it, man, and this is why this is why we got to get a new deal because you know what's going to happen? Westwood One is going to allow them to drop the show. Because our contract is not up with them. I did some checking. Right. Our contract is not up on December 18th with KKMA. They're just breaking the contract. Yeah, and they're doing it in a very slimy way. And Westwood One will do nothing about it, which is exactly why we got to break away from them, why we got to get our own deal going with our own agent with these stations. Right. But if the station does this, we sue their ass, mm -hmm. and we make it real hard for them to cancel on us so that the stations we go in business with are our partners. Unfortunately, we thought we were partners with KKMA. You know, the frustrating thing is every single affiliate we have, we get excited when we get a new affiliate, we pay attention to the new affiliates, we take it personally, and... And this just sucks. And what sucks is because we really have been aware of this market and aware of the success that we've been having in it mm -hmm. and aware of the people of Sioux City. You know, we, you know, Sewer City, all the calls that we've gotten. I mean, we've gotten more calls from this tiny market. than, than it's, just, it's just frustrating. It really is. Yeah, and they don't get it. I mean, I'm not blowing our own horn. We're a big national show. We're on in over 60 cities. Or I guess now the count will be 60 now that they're gone. We're on 60 cities. This is like the smallest market that we're on in. We pay a lot of attention to Sioux City. We appreciated the fact 
That they ran the show. They ran the whole show. Yep. They ran it past seven o'clock or six o'clock local time when we go over. Huh. We appreciate the fact that our audience uh, delivered killer ratings for us. The least you could do, the least you could do, would be to call to say, "Listen, we decided to go in another direction." I'm just glad we found out about this because that is just lowbrow crap. Mm -hmm. I hope all of our advertisers pull their pull their ads too, just like this guy at. Uh, Stephen truck equipment did. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize. I mean, I read it, but I'm so angry I didn't read the right. part and retain the part. He said, "Don't, don't say my business." But I think, frankly, I think this guy uh, deserves uh, some kind of credit yeah. in the community. Hey, go, go patronize him. I mean, he's got, you know, he's got a good business. You know, whatever. If you do that kind of work, you know, give him, give him some business. And good for him because he writes that the manager there BS'd him about canceling our show, mm -hmm. then let him know, and then the guy stole this. And look at this. This is like something that they've had printed up and, and <laughs> real pretty oldies 99, good time rock and roll. Yeah. They got all the crap ready to change everything on Monday like it's going to be a big secret. And they thought they were so smart. We'll do this when Don and Mike are gone so that when their listeners call, yeah. no one would know the difference. I want to find out if we're still on there. All right. If somebody yeah. can go ahead and pull the plug. Let me go to the phone. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, uh, I need that number one more time. Are you in Sioux City? No, I'm not. I'm stuck in middle, but I can still complain. Listen, I appreciate that. Hello, Don and Mike. Hi. Um, I'm listening to the station right now. Are we on there right now? Yes. Good. Then everybody should know that these are low-level, blood-sucking maggots. And everybody should call this station and should expose them for what they are. They're no goods, man. All you do is deliver the numbers, deliver the ratings, and this is how they thank you. Right. <laughs> I agree, but they're talking about Sioux City. Oh, no, you're it's, talking to us right now. We're talking honey, to you oh, right okay. now. Duh. Right. You're on the air with us. KKMA is out of Lamar's, Iowa. Right, but the, the market, uh, honey, honey, the market is Sioux City. Okay, I, I agree. But, but it's no, it's not a question of if you agree or not. <laughs> the station's transmitter is in Lamar's, but the market they serve is Sioux City. Oh, God. We were a little hard on her. I'm sorry. We were talking to you right from the beginning, you moron. Hello, Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi there. I am so mad right now. I could spit. Good. Call the station. Call the station. I did. I called the station. Yeah, what they so say? One thing. I have the number that you can get through to because if you call information, there's no listing for KKMA in Lamar's or Sioux City. Um, and what about this number I just gave out? Seven one two five four six. Four one two one. Oh, that might be the yeah. hotline. No, that's, oh, that's well. the one, but they don't. They wouldn't let me talk to the GM or. What did they say? Did anybody say anything to you? Yeah, the gal on the phone was just extraordinarily patronizing. and. What did she, she said, say? She said that they were going to run the best of for two more weeks. And I said, well, what happens after that? And she said, well, um, it just all is up in the air. She no, she, listen, I'm telling you something. She's lying right now because we're on vacation starting Monday for two weeks. And they told this guy that the new format kicks in. Monday, next Monday, December 21st. So you get there, her, they're lying to you. I told her to, uh, well, it took me a while to get through, obviously, um, but I told her to expect um, a lot of angry listeners. Hey, listen, I hope our listeners will not only call today, I, I really hope that our listeners will flood this station with calls today, tell you what, tonight, you know, tomorrow, keep doing next it. week, if they've got an email address, I, you know, someone will call in with the email address. I, I really, just... Let them, let them know let them know what a 20 share of listeners sounds like. People don't understand that in Iowa, especially where I'm at, I'm in northwestern Iowa, there's crap garbage for radio stations, including KKMA, except for the fact that they do run some sports shows earlier in the morning. I miss is a whole other ridiculous story. I'm not even talking That's about that queer. The point. But, I mean, there's this garbage for stations Listen, up there. I understand your point. You're in the middle of nowhere, and this is like the only real radio the only that you can I get. The only have in my whole right. day. I, and and I just about in tears. I'm so pissed. Okay. Well, you know, no. the thing is, let me tell you something, it, it, we have to stress this, because it does work. When listeners mobilize and when people call radio stations and when they hear from you, it, change can be effective. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, when we get the entire skinny on exactly what they tried to pull here, uh, you know, yeah, we really don't want to be with I them. I mean, who knows? Well, you know, and that's why I'm glad we're on right now to say any other stations in Sioux City, really. I mean, this is something. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, someone's going to have to get, hold on a second. I'm, someone's going to have to get me, like, the ratings book mm -hmm. from Sioux City. 
so I can find out what some of the other stations are, what our competition is. You know, right. There's got to be like an FM AOR station, an album rock station, or maybe there's a news talk station. Yeah. You know, I don't care if it's a station that's in the toilet. We've, no. we've taken stations from worse to first before. Yeah, this is this is just too weird. It's, it's almost hard to explain. got to be other stations that want a 20 share. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is like being fired a week before Christmas. It, it is. is. really what it's like. Oh, it is. Oh, oh. Making sure we were on vacation when they were going to drop the bomb. KKMA. Community leader, KKMA. Hello. Yes, I'm calling from Sioux City. Hi, you're on the air with us. Yes, uh, for those of you that are for you to know, at 2 o'clock there's a country station. Um, Dr. War is on it too. And other than that, just music, you guys rock. Well, we, uh, you know, we should hook up with, uh, with like one of the music stations, but that's... You know, we just got to get the word out now. That yeah, we really do, and that's important to let Sioux City know. As of Monday, the show will be available. Uh, cause, uh, I'm telling you, if they think they're going to run the show next week and the week after when we're on vacation, uh, no. you can forget about that. No way. Well, you can forget about that. Oh, okay. You think you're going to stab us? Listen, when I'm being f mm -hmm. I like to be kissed when I'm being f Bully! 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 They're raping us, man. They're raping us. They're raping our listeners. This is just, damn it, this is bad business. This is bad all the way around. You know, when you take away the fact that it makes no sense, and 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 they shouldn't be doing it because it's a stupid move because we are having the success we're having, then you throw in the the, the way that they did it. Right. Right. And the combination is a, is a nasty one-two punch. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, I just got off with uh, one of the receptionists at KKMA. Yeah. And uh, I was pissing a bitch about it. And uh, they said that they're going to give it time for all the listeners who don't like you guys a uh, chance to listen. Uh, listen, hold on a second. All the listeners who don't like us have already registered, and it's something called the Arbitron Ratings Survey. The listeners that don't like us have spoken. The listeners that do like us have already spoken. This is not a subjective decision. And, that, and one of the things she says, she goes, well, if uh, the listeners want to get a uh, hundred other advertisers and go to another station, that's their prerogative. Mm. I just hope everybody really floods this station with calls. Uh, Absolutely. Well, I, I tried for about 20 minutes and it was busy the well, whole time. Well, that's good. That means a lot of people are doing that. And, you know, when, and you're right. A 20 share speaks volumes. They'll, they'll know. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah. This is Robert Grund. I run a small business in northwest Iowa. Yeah, I'm all day. I put up an antenna. A salesman told me once about your show, mm -hmm. so I tried to get it in, and I said, I'm like 120 miles away from him. And it was hard to even pull them in, so I put up a big antenna, mm -hmm. aimed it toward them. The only time I tune it in is when you guys come on, otherwise I ask. It makes me sick. Right. And I love oldies. I'd listen to oldies. I'd, I wouldn't move the antenna or the... Yeah, here's what I don't get. They play a box of records now when we're not on. Yeah. Right? They play classic rock now when we're... You know... The only reason that, that would enter any logic into this at all would be that you are dealing once again with a completely incompetent sales force mm -hmm. that can't deliver the product and they are using us once again as an excuse. That happens. That happened to us uh, at a couple of stations, Dave Goes. And it's, it's crap. And it's total crap because this is a very saleable program. I'm going to go get the numbers. Hey, Rob, we have, Jeremy, ask Jeremy to run a, uh, one of those tap scan things on Sioux City for me, please. We'll pull up the numbers. Uh, I'll read you some ratings. Good. I'll let you know how, how they got such a problem selling the show. Hello. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, Tony. Down in my show. Well, listen, even, no, listen, even, you know what? How we've been on there too long, man. Yeah, really. We've yeah. been on that station too long to be treated like this. Yeah, you, know? you, have, you have established a loyal following of listeners. That is, that is, you know, any guy that's in the business will tell you that is the most valuable thing in radio. It's when you have a core listenership, a core listenership, which allows you to do this, really. And this is the way this show is performed. You've got a group of people that listen to this show exclusively, and they're going to listen to this show wherever it is, and it's in that town, right? you got to be such sneaky bastards about it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I mean, really. Whatever happened to the old deal, but just call up, call up your Westwood One rep and say, "Listen, we're dumping the show." Yeah, we'd be pissed. We'd we'd pitch a fit, but at least it wouldn't be so sneaky trying to go behind our backs. Yeah, I think they're uh, realizing that uh, if they uh, they wanted to low key this, that this was not the route yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Yeah, we got a lot of loyal fans. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, Weasley. Oh, the wrong line. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Don. Hey, hey Mike. Hey. Hey guys, listen, um, this is obviously a completely unilateral decision on, on one person's part, you know, that's got some religious agenda, but what, what they fail to understand, I think, is that... What's the religious one, agenda? Well, I mean... What's the goddamn religious agenda? Well, I'm just thinking that... Jesus H. Christ, what is the religious? 
angle on this? What do you mean by, by one guy? I mean, you're saying one person? I just, I just figured that whoever's running the show out there, you know, the, the general manager or somebody... We've been on for three getting years. Complaints from, he's getting complaints from obscure... People no, no, no. Listen, listen see, to the show. here's why that doesn't wash out, though. Because it's not like they just picked the show up 30 days ago and he's getting a flood of uh, controversial calls and letters. We've been, over, we've been overperforming at that radio station for three years. And, and as a matter of fact, when we recently opened it up and told stations you could pick us up after the prearranged stop time, they're one of the stations that continue to run the show past 6 o'clock local time. That's the wacky part. So it just I, doesn't make sense, man. I know. May I make another comment? No. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Donna Mike. Yeah. I'm calling from a tractor out here. I'm 100 miles south of Sioux City, a man in my pit. <laughs> you're the guy. You're my favorite calls from Sioux City. Well, you guys out in the middle of a farmer's field. I hope all you guys what? on your tractors will drive down to the station and mobilize some kind of uh, yeah. parade route. Drive some tractors well, down there. I'm on about 6,000 gallons of hog winter. I'm going to back up to their front door and dump right in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Hello, Donna Mike. Donna Mike. Yeah. This is Josh from Sioux City. Hello, Josh. Just telling all the listeners to keep calling the station because they're getting very frustrated. Good. Are they really? How are they treating you guys? Oh, not very good. I said, I asked them, how come they're taking down a mic off the air? And they said, there's just a lot of a lot of reasons, but don't you think somebody else would be smart enough to pick them up? I said, now, why are you, no kidding, somebody else would be smart enough that you guys are being so stupid, and then he hung up the phone. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Dumb, there you go dumb, dumb and dumber. You know, your people at the front desk are like the people that greet you. That's the yeah. first people that you talk to should right. make the best impression. Right. <laughs> and listen, you know, like they can't handle it, just like they couldn't handle this. Right. They can't handle the calls now with people. Yeah. They can't just they can't just say, Thank you for your opinion. Thank you. Goodbye. Click. Uh, right. I gotta start with this bull crap. Yeah. Oh. I hope everybody uh, listen, folks, continue to flood this station with calls. Now we we gotta move on because we've got other stuff to do on the show today. We do. We you know we had to point this out. This is uh, really ridiculous. It's uncalled for, and we certainly didn't deserve this. Not with the way we performed. We're gonna continue to give out this station's phone number. Right. Area code seven one two. The business line is five four six four one two one. Please call them and tell them you don't appreciate the fact that the show's being canceled. Tell them you don't appreciate the sneaky bastard like way that they're trying to, to handle this mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just it's bad business man and please keep after them keep you know do it more than once if you can yeah right hello don and mike show yeah i'd like to speak to don and mike yeah you're on the air sir this is eric von sagren i was calling 100 last night and i am pissed oh mike it's eric von sagren the von sagren family is upset aren't they eric they're all pissed that's right all the von sagrens are very frustrated <laughs> I gotta move to get the radio station now. Eric, you won't have to move anywhere because hopefully, you know, we'll get another station there. But really, I, I hope all the Von Sagrids will call KKMA. Yeah. And we know there are a lot of you. I'm rallying the troops, boys. I'm rallying the troops. Because I know you guys are like rabbits. You reproduce all the time, you, you Von Sagrids. That's crazy Von Sagrid. But really, just, you know. Think about that. I'm going to read one more time the letter from the client, and then we're going to get off this. The rumor is true KKMA is dropping your show. Um, I ignored the jerk that called your show. However, I had my advertising review today with the station assistant manager and cornered him on this deal. Okay? So this is a guy that buys an advertising schedule on our show. Right. Who gets, gets the guy in a room and says, listen, are you canceling Don and Mike? So he writes on, after bull -essing me for quite a while, he let loose with it. Mm. It seems another radio station has dropped their oldies format and KKMA, as of Monday, is going to be another oldie station. However, they're keeping anus in the morning. The assistant manager told me they were notifying you guys by mail on Friday. So when the crap hits, you are on your Christmas break. That way, you cannot hammer on them until they are long gone. This gentleman even showed me the new lineup promo cards and swore me to secrecy. There you go. I know you don't believe me, which is why in true Don and Mike style, I stole one of the lineup cards. <laughs> I've taken the liberty to fax this card to you as well. At least this way, you have two days to blast these jerks. So think about this. Sneaky sons of bitches. They cancel it. they got a client in there who, who's like backing him into a corner. So the guy finally says, okay, here's the information. And we would never have known about it if the client hadn't stolen it and faxed it. And, and they tried to lie to the client at first. Unreal. Hello, Don and Mike Show.
now they're just hanging up on people. I finally got through, and they didn't even talk at all. It was just a click. <laughs> That's why, and I'm serious about this, we can't do this the way we're bombing Iraq. We can't just do this for four or five hours at a crap. Right. This has to be sustained. As long as we're on the air in Sioux City through Ramadan, <laughs> yeah, right. Through rub-a-dub. <laughs> through rub dope <laughs> We have got to continue. Really. Everybody's yeah, keeping And I want to get that message out. And, and this is to uh, all of the radio stations in Sioux City, Iowa. I want to, you know, we're we're eager. We're ready. Okay? Well, I mean, because if they're going to pull this, you know, even if they were to come and change things around, I'm not sure I want to work for this. Yeah, nothing station. would make us happier at this point. Then to come back from the Christmas break and be on a new station. I will tell all my friends. And talk about hammering KKMA. Absolutely. I can guarantee whatever station in Sioux City picks us up, uh -huh. yeah. it will be our number one priority. Absolutely. <laughs> to hammer KKMA into the friggin' ground. All right. Okay. It's a rally, guys. Okay. Okay. With the Fab Four Friday. Oh. Instant Winner Thursday. Boy. The afternoon trivia quiz. Yeah, yeah you're that's clever yeah. and that's very original. Yeah, you're going to get a twenty share doing that with your Beatles archives. Song of the day. All requests and dedications. Cruising USA for lovers only. Oh my God. Uh, it's yeah. personal. The thing is, that's that's an insult too, because this is that generic good time oldies crap. That people see right through, man. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus. Oh, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey. Hello, is everyone listening to KKMA? Yeah. And they just, you're off. There you oh, go. Surprise. Not yeah, surprised. Yeah, right, I, 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 the only way I can hear you is talking to you right now. They just, they're putting There you go. The old, hey, I, we got a good, uh, how long were we on for? Uh, uh, you're on, I don't know, maybe both. Maybe about 40 minutes. Good. Right. Yeah, so we, got, right, we got our message We out. got the gist of the message. That's right. That's oh. great. I'm, I'm glad we did that, and I'm glad we were able to catch them by surprise. Oh, those guys can go, you know, do right. themselves. They're playing old days now? What are they doing? Yeah, oh. they're playing uh, some Chicago here. Yeah, see, they haven't officially changed the format. Right now, they're still classic rock. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're, you know, that's another group of their, you know, that's being alienated right now because they were sneaky. It blows. <laughs> it sure does blow. I man. keep calling them. You know what? Now we're going to have to... Remember the guy that called and said, hey, I'm in Sacramento? Right. Now's when it's great to have these other 60 stations. Because really, mm -hmm. everybody in all these other cities, right? give them a call. Continue to call them up. Just tell them you're from Sioux City. Sure. Yeah, this, the show's dynamite. And is it Leah Remy? Remini. Remini. Remini? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a tasty bag of groceries. <laughs> she's a tasty, she's a tasty bag of groceries. <laughs> she sure is. All right, listen, thank you for the support. You bet. I do appreciate it. Excellent. All right, well, we got our we got, we got our piece. We knew they were going to do that, too. Good, Christ. They like the Saddam Hussein's of radio. They sure are. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, Chris Younger's from Sioux City, Iowa. Hey, they uh, they've now just started to play this oldies crap. Yeah, no, we we're aware of that. That's why we're very glad that we got our message out that at least for 40 minutes today the truth was heard on KKMA. Sure. All right, thank you. For 40 minutes, and even that shows they're just a net thing. They're enough, like. They weren't smart enough to pull the plug when I started reading the letter from the client? <laughs> really? <laughs> right? <laughs> they let it go for 40 minutes? Oh, that's our advantage right there. Keep calling them, sir. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, guess where I'm calling from. Oh, all these calls are going to be from Sioux City. They're, I know, they're playing records now, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Northwest Iowa. Though. This is the only place we can get you around here. Now they just cut you off, boy. No, no, we're in Burlington, Iowa. Why'd you move to Burlington? That's way on the other corner of Iowa, though. Well, Iowa's Iowa, man. <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? I'll move further south. I get closer to Missouri. 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 All right, thank you. See you back. Sorry about that. Hello, Don and Mike. Don and Mike. Yeah. They just pulled you off the air. I don't know if you heard or not. Yeah, no, we heard. Oh, it really rubs my rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> I love these I love these people, man. we got to get back on into some Midwestern expressions. I really do. Iowans are a fantastic people. You know what? Thank you. Except the people who run that stage. Right. Uh, I'm going to try to call myself. And they're in radio. 712-546-4121. What a nice surprise. Oh. All lines busy. Well... Uh, we're going to continue to give that number out on today's show. It's personal. It's yeah. a quest. Yeah. Merry Christmas from KKMA. You yeah. know, really nice. They really care about their listeners. They're really behind you. Aren't they? <laughs> That's a shame. And that's something. Now, you know, if you'll notice, the energy level is, uh, you know, now Now we know, we realize they pulled the plug. You know, yeah. you know, and we were speaking, really, all of that was speaking to the good people of Sioux City Island. It's a shame. That was the fire. It's a shame. I'm glad we got the 40 minutes in, though. Me, too. And I'm glad we... I'm still busy. I'm glad we have such a large audience in Sioux City. Right. Huh? Because you know, mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock local time when we went on the air, yep. 
And uh, that 20 share was there listening to you us. You bet. And uh, obviously from the phone calls now and the, you know, the busy signal, they're, they're mobilizing. Hello? Hey, is this Don and Mike? Yes, sir. Yep. Um, I already pulled the plug. Yeah, we know. We know. Please listen. What you can do on your end is to call the business line. Call them up. Yeah, just keep calling them until you get through and, you know, just continue to do so and, and let them know what you think. And furthermore, you know, man, I wish we were still on because they should have thought to say, if they hear any commercials on the station, that they should call the clients. Right. Yep. They call I the clients of, of any spots that are still running on the air to call them up and say, hey, I don't appreciate the fact that you're advertising on KKMA because that works too. I should have thought to say that when we were still on there. Yeah, spread the word on that one. Oh, yeah, I know one of the advertisers. I'll see him on my way home. I'll see him. All right. Thank you, my friend. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to move away from these calls now because that's that's what all these calls will be now, people from Sioux City. Oh, you know, and, and there's some about those people out there, really. It is a small market, but we got lots of calls from Sioux City. They, were, they just had great senses of humor. It was middle America at its best, and we had a lot of fun with those calls. And, man, I hope we, whatever the case may be, when the dust settles on this, man, I still want to be on in Sioux City. It's still tough. Things were too good there to let it go. We'll let you know what happens. Again, that station's phone number, we'll give this out during the day, KKMA, the number is area code 712-546-4121. Thank you in advance. Okay, now, the lines are all jammed up now with everybody from Sioux City calling us to tell us they're playing Midnight at the Oasis by Maria Moldauer. <laughs> so, we'll have Christine uh, shuffle through those calls, and we'll see if we get a caller 100. It's not calling from Sioux City and tell us they've taken us off. people. Or maybe they put the lines on hold. Right. You know, that's why it's important that people continue to call Yeah. tomorrow. Or maybe they're having the uh, receptionist actually uh, debate people at the front desk, <laughs> which is always <laughs> always the smart thing. Well, whilst the general manager and program director cower in the corner. <laughs> well, if they're so good, maybe another station will pick them up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 we don't think they're any big deal. That's why we were trying to break the contract and sneak away while they were on vacation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I say, I do know that that phone calls work. Yes, they do. Because I thought Burlington, Vermont, was a lost cause, man. That station out of the blue just they just changed the format and canceled the show. Like a thousand people called them on on Monday with no prodding from us. That's good, and you know that was a format change, and that was one where they let us know what was going on, and uh, that was an upfront deal where they had a you know the whole station was switching format, and uh, that's great if they're going to accommodate us that way. I think that's a terrific idea. Put us on another station because they own a bunch of stations in town. But that's exactly why, not to beleaguer the point, but that's why we got to get away from this Westwood One thing because. Mm -hmm. If we get our agent to make a contract with these stations, like the contract that he made with Ken right. here at WJFK, uh -huh. you know, you get a station to pick up the show, and you write in the contract, you can't cancel the show. Exactly. You have to run the show from beginning to end for the entire length of the contract. That's the way it works. That's the, the way best way. way to do it. And that way you don't get dicked around like this, like, well, you like don't, being dicked around. You don't have to deal with guys that just can't make their mind up and guys that, uh, you know, have stations where the bigger problem, not necessarily always the programming as much as getting the advertisers on the radio station, which a lot of these small stations, that is one of the toughest things they have. And they try to make excuses. And, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, you get sales managers that have been sitting there for a long time without much success. Mm -hmm. And who are they going to blame it on? Gee, let's blame it on the show that's got a 20 share. Oh, and Mike, uh, Jeremy ran the tap scan for me. Mm -hmm. And gee, I can see why they canceled the show now. Because the last ratings book, we were down to a 19.6. Oh, there oh. you go. There's the reason. Yeah, we finally had slipped <laughs> under a 20 share. Must be, yeah. In adults 25 to 54, <laughs> the last ratings period, spring 1998, we had a 19.6. Six share. Now I understand. <laughs> now I completely understand. There wasn't a two in front of that. Jesus. You can't sell a 19.6 share? <laughs> you know what they would do with a 19.6 share at WGFK? Oh. Well... They've got those numbers in some of our demographics here. Well, we'd be getting special personal favors from management when we'd walk in here every day. Uh, Ken would be blowing us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be giving us oral sex. <laughs> you I love it when you translate. <laughs> Not that I would want it. <laughs> I said, no thanks. <laughs> Just maybe a handshake. Oh, my God. No, not like that. A I mean, handshake. A regular handshake. Very good. Okay. Oh. A regular handshake. Any contact with him of a sexual nature oh. would, uh, you know, turn my stomach. And you know that tomorrow night at the Christmas party, when he has a couple of drinks at some point, he's going to come up to me. Mm -hmm. He always comes up to me, and that's what he wants. Hey, how about a hug? <laughs> Who's your buddy? He'll do that. He does that every year. About right. midnight, he'll come over, and he'll go, you know what? We've been through the battles together. That's when he put his arm around me. He got his that boozy, bad, <laughs> stale breath blowing in my face. 
and tell me they love me. And if he hits you at the right time, you'll actually give him a big kiss. Yeah, I've been known to hug back. <laughs> I'm just as guilty. <laughs> I've had a little too much party. And, yeah, but it's great. That's what I like when you have too much party. I, I, wish, that. I wish I was like that. I wish I would. I really do. I wish I'd go that direction. I don't. I go the direction where the next morning we all wake up and, uh, you know, if I see somebody, like you're at a hotel or something, we used to have that DJ convention. I wake, wake up, over. I'd wake up the next morning and, and everybody would say, well... How are we this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don of my show. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi, you're on the air. Hey, I'm calling from Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, I know, they took us off. Hey, can I just stay on hold the whole time so I can listen to oh, the show? Oh, that's such an no, honor. We, no. we feel for you, though. You know, uh, that's what that's probably what all these calls are still, right? Right, I mean, all the lines are still ringing. These aren't contact people. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey. hey, this is Mike from Sioux City. Yeah, I'm doing. Hi, Mike. Sorry about that. No, no problem. I just talked to 104.1. Oh, you did? The manager's name is Dave. I oh, oh, that's not our station. Our station is 99.5. <laughs> All right, you talked to the guy at 104.1, huh? Yeah, and uh, his name was Dave something. I didn't catch his number. He said he used to work with Don in Washington. Well, I've worked with everybody. It would help if you had his last name. Um, gosh. W-N-A-X. So his first name was Dave? Dave. Cool, yeah. He said he used to run a... The Predictor. You were doing a top 40... Cyber? And it seems... Uh, yeah. Uh, that sounds right. No way. No, way. no Dave Schreiber yeah. is currently living in Phoenix with his mom and dad. Yeah. Dave oh. Schreiber would not be a manager. That's impossible. Uh, that, it, that It is not within him to manage others. Well, this, no way, Rob. He could barely manage himself. Absolutely. <laughs> this guy said he worked with you when you were on a top or uh, when out in D.C. Yeah, yeah. You were doing a top 40. So this may have been years ago. Oh, yeah, it was. And, uh, gosh, I want to say Masters or something like that. Or it, uh, that doesn't even sound right. I didn't catch you last Call him back and ask him his name. I will. Okay, call me back. Okay. Bye -bye. I'm sure our lines won't be busy. You'll get right here. Yeah, I've been trying to <laughs> They cut you off on 99.5. I know they did. I they, did. They've got their... Oh, hold on a second. They're all looking out for us. His last name wasn't Elliot, was it? It wasn't Dave Elliot, was it? Gosh, I can't think. No. If it was Dave Elliott, that guy would take up our show. Could, would Dave Elliott be in Sioux City? It's possible his career has slid into the point, Mike, where he would has slid to the point where he would be in Sioux City. <laughs> Dave Elliott would be a name. It's a great out here. And we we're playing music. Our radio sucks. I know it does. All right. Playing in a sack with just. Well, listen, hold on, hold on. <laughs> tell me, tell me one thing. I realize this is very pathetic now that I'm like asking a guy to to go out and sell our show. So we are representative out there. When you approached him, when you called up this guy at 104.1 and said, pick up the show, besides saying that he knew me, what did he? What else did he say? He said he was just had gotten back in the office and he wasn't listening to the radio or whatever. No, no, but what did he... He said their producer, his producers and everything have heard what's going on already, ah. and they're all laughing See? about it and whatever. That, that's that 40 minutes we have. That's that 40 minutes we have, because you know something? When you have that kind of market share, it's not just people that are out there on tractors listening. It's other people in the business. Hey, I'm out here on the road in my truck. It's not... Captain Dave Fogel. Yeah. If I get out of the area where I can't pick up you guys... I, in Sioux City, there would be a likely possibility. Like Captain Fogel. Captain Fogel. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, he worked with every idiot this country in the world. Dave. Captain Dave Fogel. <laughs> hey, Captain Fogel, with your Power 105. Hi, how are you? Well, Don and Mike were going to be on my TV show, then they said no at the last minute. <laughs> there was this guy, Captain Fogel, who was the nighttime disc jockey. Funny guy. I think you remember... But when MTV first came out, when they had Friday night videos, remember when that was such a big deal, when you could turn on NBC right. and like see some videos for 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Well, they gave this local disc jockey a show on Channel 50. Captain Fogel. And he would come on every week and play some videos. And every week, this guy would beg us, would you please, Donovan, please come be on my show. And every week, we would look this guy right in the face. We'd say, Captain Fogel? <laughs> The taping is Friday night at 9. We'll be there. I'm counting it, baby, because we love you. We're there for you. And we never had any intention to go. And we must it was really a terrible show. We must have stiffed this guy. I'm not kidding. Five five weeks in a row. He, he, fortunately, he had a sense of humor about it. He was, a, he was the kind of guy that lets stuff roll off his back. And it's like, you guys, you guys did it again to me. So Captain Fogel, really? My kid was sick. I promise, this Friday, we are there. 
Yes, yes. I want to introduce 99 Loop Balloon. <laughs> you go, okay. He talk about it all week on his show. Yeah, and, then, and then the night would come and be some like last second replacement from, he, the, from the staff. So you get another DJ from the talent pool to come and be on his show. Like T.J. Wright. I'm a fun chick. <laughs> I know what I'm like. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh, this calls for uh, Buzz. Sound Buzz? Buzz? Yeah, yes, sir. Hello there. Hello. Who How is? are you doing? I'm fine. Who is uh, this? This sounded like one of those, one of the Pilar boys. No, 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 no. I don't do none of that business. Uh -huh. But Buzz, I did speak to you once before. Yes. Uh, what can you I do for you? were getting very angry. Mike, doesn't this sound like the Pilar guy to you? No. Like the Pilar, not. Jorge. It no, he's like not. Going I am none of those people. <laughs> I am myself. What, what is your name, sir? My name is Mario Bongiovanni. Mario Bongiovanni. Is that your new character name? No, no, no. And Mario, why would I have gotten angry with because you? Because I wanted to make you very angry, and I spoke to you, and you said that how would I make you angry? And I said I make your bunghole very angry. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, and Jorge wearing uh, a different suit, Buzz. Yes, yeah. Buzz. <laughs> yes, sir. I love you. Uh, <laughs> please that, don't that, save that's, it. That's uh, Jorge just trying to get in your good graces by using an alien. That's the guy who said he wanted to brush his teeth with your love. That's it. I Mario. remember some of his best stuff. Mario, Mario Bongiovanni. <laughs> I like that name. Hello, Donovan. <laughs> Show. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, this is Dave in Two City. Hi, Dave. Um, just wanted to let you know that this Dave Rudin guy, that's the program director. Yeah. He is just a jerk. Why did you talk to him? Did you speak to him? I uh, have been in contact with um, him himself, and he hung up on me like two seconds after I got done talking. Or after well, how did it go? Take us out of the conversation. Um, I'm just like. He's like, this is David Rudin, and I'm like, uh, just want to know what's up with the Don and Mike thing. And he's like, you'll have to speak to somebody up front. And he hung up on me. Yeah, oh, nice. There you go. That's how you handle a problem. Real professional. Run yeah, away from it. He's a really good guy. A real pro. Hey, well, they're all pro. Okay. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hi, um, this is Ken Gardner from CCI. Iowa. We want to talk to Don and Mike. Hi, Ken. You're on the air. I'm on the air? Right. Um... Yeah, did you hear that KKMA 99.5 is going to drop your show? <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> did, did you just, like, turn on the radio? No, I'm at work, actually, Don. Mm -hmm. Well, that was Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Sorry That's all right. Over the telephone. That's yeah. okay. We're already toast there. Yeah, well, they've actually pulled the plug on us today because we found out about what they were going to do, and, uh, and we started talking about it, and they pulled the plug on the show. Unbelievable. Yep, yep. I think Saddam Hussein has got trouble. Yeah, we were talking yeah, about that. That's what I said. You, you seem to understand that. That guy's like the Saddam Hussein of radio, the general manager of that station. Yeah, well, he's going to have a lot of trouble from us. We love you down here, and, and we'll have you back on within a week. Love like you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Love, love you. Guys, I, understand, to... I understand Captain Fogel is picking up the show. <laughs> yeah, At 104.1 FM, Captain Dave Fogel. David. David Fogel. Captain David Fogel. <laughs> you never trust any disc jockey calls it off Captain. There were a lot of captains. There were a lot of captains. There were a lot of shadows. Yeah. A lot of machine guns also. And right? then there were Hollywoods for a while. Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly, mm -hmm. Machine Gun Jones. A lot of shotguns. <laughs> shotgun Tom, Shotgun Mark, Shotgun Mitch. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And then you're right. Lots of Hollywood Hamilton, Hollywood Henderson. Were there a lot of persons for a while? You guys were talking about something person. Or Only if the name rhymed, though. Right. It was like Merson person. Merson person. Yeah, a guy from Baltimore. Doctor this, Doctor that. Oh, Doctor Don Rosser. Oh, sure. That's right. Oh, and here's another big one. Bonana. <laughs> guys wouldn't be like banana. They'd be <laughs> Bonana. Bonana. This is Bonana Joe with you. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hello, Don and Mike. My Hi. brothers. Hi there. How's it going? Okay. Man, what a what a killjoy. Those bastards in Sioux City. Yeah, well, call them up, please. That's the best thing that you guys could do is to call them up at area code 712546. No, I forgot the one. 4121. <laughs> That's the number. I listen to the red bastards out of South Dakota. Wow. Um, that's where you need to be on. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Well, that's going to be our next target market. <laughs> that's, that's the big play. That's right. All right that's, that's, that's the number one. All right. That's, that's, uh, that's the target goal. What you don't know is he was making that call from a cell phone atop a buffalo. <laughs> As we tell our agent, we don't want to be on a New York uh -huh. or L.A. Right. facility. 
You put us on in butt scratch North Dakota. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. The great Northwest. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hi, radio guys. How are you? Oh, we're great, thank you. Good. I just wanted to say... As great as you can ble be when your rectum is bleeding. That's right. We're hurting today. We've been violated like violated with a broomstick by KKMA today. Yeah, oh. During the holiday season, that's the worst time to get violated. I got red and green in my underpants now. <laughs> Which end of the broomstick? Well, it's the one with the, with the splinters on it. The business end. Well, I just wanted to say how lucky we are here in the D.C. and Baltimore area because we know we're not getting our pug pulled. And I don't know what I'd do without you guys. You know something? You know that's true, and that's true for only one reason. That's true because if they start getting fudgy with us around here, we'll roll upstairs and we will walk into their office <laughs> and step on their throats. <laughs> fudgy the whale. <laughs> fudgy. As you participate in Carmella, it's the holiday season. Make sure you get Cookie Puss. <laughs> cookie Puss, fabulous ice cream product. Cinny Fin. Cinny Fin is a great, delicious cover ice cream product you're participating in. Cowboy ice cream store, but my favorite is Cookie Puss. Cookie Puss. Have a nice bite of Cookie Puss. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, yeah, this is Tom Fixer from Spencer, Iowa. Hi, Tom. Hey, I'm, I'm having a really tough time with this KKMA thing. Yeah, me too. In Northwest Iowa, I'm I'm about two hours away from Sioux City, and it's it's total frustration. You know, I don't think they have any idea when they do something like this and when you're looking at statistics that tell them that they've got so many people that are listening to it, they don't have any idea how many people they affect when they do something like this. The people from Iowa City called to say that KCJJ is now 50,000 watts and that certainly at nighttime that station can be heard. Yeah, that's a great idea. You ought to try that one. That's a station that goes all the way down to Florida and people have heard it in Atlanta and all the way up to New Hampshire. I'm telling you guys, and I mean this with all my heart, I drive across the world if I had you guys on my radio. That's very nice. You think, and, and we hope really, I think more than Get in your car then. Get yeah. in your car right now. And start driving. I, if I can enough money for that. We okay. really do hope we're on again soon in uh, Sioux City. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. You bet. Bye. All right, let's, let's do that. Let's do a break because we can't uh, go to the phones because we're just being flooded with all of our uh, great fans in Sioux City. Yeah, they are. They're good people. Uh, uh, loose ends today. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm, that guy and send that to the manager at KKMA. <laughs> and that loose end out there. <laughs> mm, happy holidays. Listen, we'll let's start getting these loose ends that we got to tie up right after this. This is the Dawn and Mike Show. Performer. I bet you were a big hit on their show, weren't you? Oh, they liked me. Mm -hmm. Of course they did. Yeah. Have you on more than once? I'm uh, probably going to go on in January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> That's good. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love this. I would love to. Five, four, six, four, one, two, one. If it's still tied up, like it was earlier. Yeah, yeah, we'll be for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's been going on three hours now. And that's good. That means people are responding. Yeah. But listen, I'll give that number out again. Because don't just call today. Right. Call tomorrow for the rest of your life. 712-546-4121. And we thank you. Now, um, turn on the Barry Man a little, please. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Uh, that reminds me. I'm watching Regis and Kathy see today. Oh, God, I saw the same tape you did. Okay. What a puke. He, turn that off for a minute. He is so disgusted now when she tells the story. Yeah, he is really getting fed up. You can tell that he is definitely fed up with her. It's like he wants to talk about this party he went to last night. He took pictures. They want to do both. They both want to do their name dropping thing. Right. And Regis is trying to get his in. Trying to get his in. Saying, I went to this party and this person was here. This person was here. She jumps in with her. She says, oh, I went to a party at Claudia Cohen's house and then I went to see Barry Manilow. <laughs> and right away... You know that he's not even paying attention. Yeah. Cause, did you see the part where she said, what are you looking at? Yeah, right. And he was, like, just looking off saying, looking off into space. <laughs> she's talking, and he's not even giving her the, uh, the, the, he's not even giving her the benefit of looking at her and even faking like he's listening to what she's saying. Because right. he had a celebrity that he was hanging out with, and he was excited to talk. It was one of those days where they both had similar celebrity stalking experiences. They, they loved that more than anything else, mm -hmm. and they both wanted to talk about it. And so he was really just like, yeah, we're really happy. Okay, three days you've talked about that. Okay, right, that yeah. right, three days. <laughs> but then she... She caught them. She said, oh, King she me. killed him. She killed him in the celebrity war. If they were playing checkers, she'd have to say, King me. Yeah. Because they're going back and forth. They're really fighting for their airtime about who can kiss the most celebrity ass that they were with last night. Right. And then she says, and then after we went to the party, we went to see Barry Manilow. Of course she does. That's, that's a Kathy Lee evening out right there. Exactly. I have to go to the Manilow show. 
We have some videotape. And, and did you see his face just drop when oh, she says they have the videotape? He's defeated. And, you know, there she is. And, again, boy, they really had to twist her arm when Barry Manilow called her out on stage. All right, so Barry Manilow is up on stage, right? All right. How queer is Barry Manilow, incidentally? You know something? I love Frank Sinatra, and I love his music, and I, and I wanted to see what it would sound like, and they, they've been advertising the Barry Manilow's things like that. You didn't buy that, did you? God, no. And, and the thing is, I, I, but I was intrigued to see, you know, what, what will it sound like? It's so ridiculous because you got to realize Frank had that that machismo way of singing. Hey, here I am, and then it's just like you know, I did it my way. It just doesn't work. He's up on stage in his jumpsuit, right? And he goes, uh, it's at this point of the show. And what they're showing is a really grainy, cheap videotape. <laughs> he goes, at this point, I always pull somebody out of the audience to right. come up and sing with me. Is Kathy Lee Gifford here? And did you notice uh, some of the people in the audience? There was a, there was a uh, mixing of booze, sure. also of that, uh, uh, and then a little on. of this. And then yeah. he said, "Is she here? Let's bring her up. Right. Bring her up." And she comes up on stage, and she is not getting a standing ovation. No, and she uh -huh. is in horrible. As bad as her voice is, it was worse for this. And oh. she can't she can't sing anyway. And he is patronizing her because right. he brings her up, and then he puts his arm around her, and he goes. Isn't she beautiful? And he doesn't get the applause now. And then he has to say it again. Come on. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she beautiful? And then finally everybody gets sure. And then they was a can't smile without you. They can't smile without you. They sing together. And she does a can't smile. But I will give Regis credit because right. when they came back then, they showed the videotape of Barry Mandela singing with her. Uh -huh. And then Regis says, <laughs> well... I remember when we saw the tape last week when he brought Katie Couric up on stage to sing that same song with him. And then she has to go into her spiel and tell the truth, which is everybody that gets called up on stage sings Can't Smile Without You with Barry Manilow. And immediately gets a, uh, a video tape. Video tape. It. <laughs> it's a regular thing that he does. So the people. battle back and forth. Regis wants to talk about the celebrity act he was with last night. Right. She wants to talk about hers. He wants to talk. She wants to talk. He wants to talk. She says, I got a videotape. He's momentarily defeated. Mm -hmm. She shows the tape. Then he says, right. uh, we had, we had the same tape with, with Barry Manilow and Katie Couric. And then she says, but everybody that does it gets the videotape. Right. And then, like, <laughs> they go, oh, we're out of time. Here's our trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> that show, that show sometimes is just pure. You can really cut beneath the layers and see the disdain of the suit have for each other. He's really just sitting there every day going, well, what is the big queen bee going to bring in for me today? Yeah. Wonderful. Then occasionally it'll happen. Normally, he will sit like a defeated eunuch and next to her as she prattles on about her latest little cody horrific times. Eunuch. That means no genitals. Right. <laughs> and, and then today, he obviously he wanted to get it, and today he was annoyed. Yeah, he was pissed today. <laughs> it's been three days in a row with this. We've had it now. <laughs> they, they just, they are a little crispy with one another. And she starts talking, and she goes, "Excuse me, <laughs> hello, are you listening?" And he goes, "Yes, yes I'm." Uh... I'm looking at Gelman. I'm, all, I'm looking at Gelman while, I'm, while you're talking. And the whole segment was the disinterested Regis, which is, yeah, well, uh, okay, we're very happy for you. <laughs> Fantastic. You're uh, great. We're really looking forward to the next time you uh, perform with Barry Manilow. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the trivia question now. It's like the energy is completely sucked out of the room. That's when that show was really great. Oh, it's fun because you see that little dynamic between them, and, and she is so completely out of control. All right, now, well, Barry Manilow is what they be thinking that today on a region of the Kansas City. Oh, Barry Manilow. You're doing it with every celebrity that's in the crowd. All right, let's have the boys fight first, okay? Let's all uh, fight. Let's to nothing. Yes, I know. Another call from Sioux City. Call them. Well, I, I tried calling them. Keep and trying. Their phone is off the hook or something. All right. Let me right. let me explain to you. Like uh, Ricky used to say to Lucy. Please, <laughs> please explain to me what happened. What did happen? Okay. Bad day. We've got very loyal litters, listeners in Sioux City who have bestowed upon us fantastic ratings. The last rating we had a 19.6 share. Yeah, we are delighted with our success story out there. Okay, that's a success. You get a 19.6. Mm -hmm. You're number one. It's incredible. So, of course, we were horrified when one of our clients, somebody who runs commercials on KKMA, right, yeah. sent us a letter and said that, oh, your phone's breaking up. Guy sent us a letter, a fax, 
and said he had a meeting with KKMA about buying more advertising on our show. Right. And that they told him that they were going to drop the show and that they're changing to an all oldies format. And that first, well, let me just read you part of the letter. Okay. And we, and we read this letter earlier on the air before they yanked us off, so everybody in Sioux City would know how they're screwing us around. <laughs> um, I had my 90-day advertising review today with the station assistant manager, and I cornered him. After bull assing me for quite a while, he let loose with it. It seems another radio station has dropped their oldies format, and KKKMA, as of Monday, is going to be another oldie station. The assistant manager told me <clears throat> they were canceling your show and notifying you guys by mail on Friday, uh -huh. so the crap will hit while you are on your Christmas break. Sneaky, sneaky. That way you cannot hammer them until they are long gone. This gentleman even showed me the new lineup promo cards and swore me to secrecy. I know you don't believe me. And that is why, in true Don and Mike style, I stole one of the new lineup cards. I have taken the liberty to fax this card to you as well. At least you can blast those jerks back to the Stone Ages. And then the guy was savvy enough, gave us this little lineup card they have, this little promo sheet for the new format. Mm -hmm. For the oldies 99, good time, rock and roll, and it's all jive ass, been there, done that, radio, boring radio ideas. And, you know, we're mad on a couple of different fronts. First off, we can't believe that we have such loyal listeners that have really rewarded us in that station with great ratings that they would cancel the show. So we're pissed about that. But we're also pissed that they weren't even gentlemen about it. You know, they weren't stand-up guys. They were going to actually do it and uh, and you know do it while we were on vacation, which is just the lowest life form thing you can do. And you know, it reminds me very much of when the Baltimore Colts moved moved out of Baltimore. Yeah. In the middle of the night, in the dead of night, they snuck out because they didn't want anybody to know about it. And that's exactly what KKMA was doing with us. They're going right. to cancel the show while we were on vacation next week because it's Christmas. Because then they knew that we wouldn't be able to say anything about it. That's right. So we got on the air and we talked about it. And, the, you know, because they're such dumbasses, they left us on for 40 minutes mm -hmm. telling the truth about what happened. I read the letter to, from our client right. and read about the new programming. And, you know, it's one thing if a station wants to cancel a show. I guess that's their prerogative. Right. Mm -hmm. But why you'd cancel a show that in the last rate has got you a 19.6 and why you would cancel a show and not even have the decency to be a man about it, to call up and say, hey, listen, we canceled your show, it's not going to work out. I don't, I don't get it. And they've been treating the listeners that have called like crap all day today and hanging up on them and uh, you know, trying to get them into debates. And, hey, the bottom line is that uh, we were winning for this radio station. They screwed us. They were going to unceremoniously pull us off the station, and they were going to do it when we were out of town because they didn't want us to talk about it. And, and screw them. So what we're going to ask you, because you live in Sioux City, we're asking everybody listening to us now in all the other cities, so please call them at area code, area code 712, and their phone number is 546-4121. And tell them they're rotten, they're rotten sons of bitches and that they're two-faced bastards. And furthermore, if you hear anybody running commercials on KKMA, and this I really mean, you should call up the clients. And say, so, you know, you're not getting what you were uh, supposed to get. Huh? Yeah, like if you hear Buzz Burbank's Bakery, you know, say, we have the, be we have the best bagels in town. Wow. Uh, call them up. That's and the best bagels in town. Call them up and say, listen, I heard your commercial on KKMA. Are you, are you aware that they canceled my favorite show and they did it in the middle of the night, just like the Baltimore Colts moving out of Baltimore to Indianapolis? I, I will. Believe me, I'm going to call them. I'm going to write them. I'm going to find an email address. I'm going to let okay. the advertisers know. It's underhanded. It's... It's another lame thing Sue City could do. And, you know, the it's, bubble, low, it's stupid. Uh -huh. It really is. It's a stupid thing to do. And it, it demonstrates they have no concern for the people that listen to their radio station because we have shown them that people love this show, and that's why you're listening in droves out in Sioux City. And you know, they, they don't care. The deal we made with these stations when we would sign on to them is that you run the show. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> oh, that's for now. <laughs> you, would, you run the show, and we'll get you big ratings. Right. Well... A 19.6 rating. I don't know what you know about the radio business. That's a big and huge. But that's, you know, if you get a 10 share in radio, you're considered golden. And the bottom line in this business is that's what we're expected to do. That's what we bring to the table. We got ratings. We got loyal listeners. They screwed us. And more than that, they showed that they don't really care about the people that listen to the station. They didn't even have the decency. You know what I mean? To come on the air and say, listen, we're going to make a format change here. We're going to do this. They want to do this behind our backs. They've already got all this new uh, crap, all their new propaganda printed up and ready to get out on the street about their new format. And what sucks is that, you know, we talk to people in Sioux City like you and like all those good people out there. Some really fun 
interesting people that called and and really it, that's what really sucks you hear it in their voices how frustrated they are and it's not fair it's not you know and it's as, as don said one thing to do it another thing to do it the way they did it well if they're going to do it I'm, I, oh they better get you guys back on the other the air or i'm going to screw them i've got so many people that have already i called i can't believe it i got in the car and it's some you know, like you said oldies crap yeah so I didn't listen to anything on the way home from work. I'm going crazy. I no, love you guys. We're sorry about that. You know, that's a big letdown, too, because listen, I know. At the end of a long, crappy day, man, that's one of the things that makes me happy about doing the show. You know, Mike and Buzz, too. Absolutely. You know, you know that people, after a long, hard day at work, they can get into the car, turn on the radio, and hear something that's going to either make them happy or right. make them mad. The best compliment we ever get doing this job, and it has been for years, is somebody going through, uh, you know, a tough time at work, tough mm -hmm. time in their life, and they say that, uh, you know, they forget about it when they listen to the show. And that is, honest to God, that is the highest compliment we can be paid. And a lot of people do that. And, and you know, that's what sucks. And, we're, and now we can't do that for the people in Sioux City. And, you know, it's on our, our hands right now, and it's frustrating. But the listeners, you you have the power in this situation. So please well, what's do. What's the chance you guys will be back on the air, Annie? We uh, sure as hell hope we'd like to get on with another radio station. Listen to be honest with you, with a 19.6 share, I'm pick you up. I don't think somebody would pick us up, but also, I, I would never have predicted that this station would be a station that would, would cancel the show. So, I mean, keep after them. Keep, keep calling them, tell your friends to do the same. I will. God, there's nothing better than trying to conceal your laughing your ass off in your car and you're okay. by yourself and people are looking at you like you're a complete idiot. Well, um, you're very nice and... and Please call the station. We hope we're back on soon. If not on this station, on that, well, you know, no, we're not going to be back on that station. I don't see that happening on another station. I'd love to get on with another station. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me try that. 712-546-4121. It's been about three and a half hours. Ah, unbelievable. Oh, we're good. Maybe we'll be able to speak to a manager. Okay, we Yes, KKMA? Yes. Yeah, hi, listen, this is Don and Mike, and we're on the air. We'd like to speak to um, Dave Rudin, please. That's me. Hey, you rat bastard. What kind of, what kind of a cheesy businessman are you? Really? We caught you. We caught you. We mm -hmm. found out what you were going to do. Really? What, I, what? Guess, I guess a 19.6 share isn't good enough for what you. What kind of a low-class, no-class, middle-management piece of crap are you? Really? Have you ever heard about at least giving somebody a call to say we're going to cancel the show? What is it? You know, you know better than the Baltimore Colts running around in Baltimore in the middle of the night. You know better than that. I guess you're right there. No, I'm absolutely right, you son of a bitch. I'm absolutely right. How dare you? They are telling how dare you? Absolutely right. You son of a bitch. What are you doing? Don't listen to my show there. You took my show off. You can't listen to it on the satellite, you bastard. Well, I kind of have to, don't I? No, you don't. You pulled the plug on it. No, you don't. Well, I have to clear the spots yet. Uh, no. Listen, I got news for you, buddy. We're making our own deal, and you're going to be the first son of a bitch that we make an example out of. The first. That is a promise. That is a promise. You got a contract with us. You busted that contract. I'll see your ass in court. I promise. I swear to Jesus Christ. You are a low-level scum, sucking bad businessman. You got no ethics. You got no morals. You're a coward. Well, don't you think you'll be on another station in a couple weeks? I'm sure I will, but that will not stop my legal action against you and KKMA. That is, that is an absolute promise. Well, we're still clearing the spots. I, you know what? Not good enough. Not good enough. How come you couldn't just pick up the phone to call somebody? Oh, I don't know. That wasn't it. No, no, no. How come you couldn't pick up the phone to call somebody? How do you pull the plug on a show with the rating success that we have? What the hell is the is the decision process there? Well, well, how do you do it? I'm, I'm curious. Would you argue the fact a that nineteen point six share? Would, would you argue the fact that our show's been a rating success on your station? Well, I yes. guess I could, but it wouldn't do any good. Hold on. Yes or no? Are the ratings much better than when we started on your station? I, I guess I couldn't tell you for sure, but uh, you're, I, now I, you're a liar. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to be honest with us. You know you didn't have the ratings that we have now. Your audience, and it says here that you're going for now is twenty-five to fifty-four. Is that true? That's what it says on your program. Oh, it says on that. Yeah, that's... Right. 
What's the target audience of this show? 25 to 54. Why did you decide to cancel our show? Well, it's, it's probably going to be a mistake, but why, why did you do it? We just why? want to know why. why. We have that right. We have we, that right to know we that. We decided to try something else. Why? Why? Because we did. You, you, Why? You, you, come on, for God's sake. Why? Be a man. Step up for once. Say the truth. Why? We just decided to try something else. You know, we, we had you guys on for five years. What kind of idiot throws away a 20 share because you want to try something else? I guess it's us. So there is really, I mean, you're going to tell the rest of our listeners listening right now who will find it very difficult to believe that you simply wanted to try something new. That is your only criteria. Well, well, I'm sure there's other criteria. Well, what are we're, they? we're waiting to hear it. Well, well, it's not going to do any good to, to argue with you. Why don't you throw one out? Why don't you throw one out? I'm giving you the opportunity now to tell us why you fired us. We just want to try something else. I mean, it's that simple. It isn't that simple no. because that, you really are. The fact of the matter is you're throwing away a great rating. Well, okay, if I tell you it's a hard sell, you're going to say... Well, you can't you can't sell a twenty share. Uh huh. That's what I predicted. That is what I predicted. Well, it's on. It's that you're, it's your what you're doing is you're taking the inadequacy and the ineptitude of your, your sales staff, and you're you're balancing that. And you know something? Oldies ain't gonna work. Probably nothing's not. gonna nothing's you're gonna work. Right. What you got to do is you got to get people that can sell it. Fire them, not us. Well. Did ever, did it ever consider? Did you ever consider? Calling me, calling somebody at the network, calling somebody at WJFK to say, listen, my salespeople are having trouble selling. Did that ever occur to you? Did you ever do that? I think we did. I don't know for sure, but... Oh, uh, you are full of I don't knows. Well, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I, you know, uh, we're just going to try this, and well, it, it, it could be wrong. It could be, you know, listen, it will be wrong. Huh? It will be wrong. You are a big-time loser. You will be hearing from my agent, who has a big, high-powered attorney, and you are going to be the guys that we make an example out of. You really are, I swear to Jesus Christ. So I hope you've got a good legal team behind you. I hope you've got a good salary, because I'll see your ass in court. That is a promise. You hear me? I'm saying that now. I'm saying that on a CBS-owned radio station. You will see us in court. It's not that easy that you can just decide you want to change your mind. You have a contract with us. It's one thing to make a change, and it's another thing to do it behind our backs. You have a contract with us, and I don't care about running the commercials. You don't get out of it like that. So you go back to your general manager and you tell him that. Okay. You can tell him to look forward to a certified letter from us next week, like the one that you are planning to send us tomorrow. Okay. And you know something? The one last thing I want to tell you here is it's not just us. We have taken more calls from the small town of Sioux City today from good people that dug this show, and you screwed them as well as screwing us. For, but to do something new, and that really is the only reason I heard. Well, that and you can't sell the show. You're not going to believe me. I like your show, too. Oh, oh please. Other station. please. Do not patronize me. Do not patronize what me. What difference does it make if you're on our station or another one? Oh, it's something called listener oh. loyalty. So, are you going to go out and clear us on another station in Sioux City then? You personally? Well, no, but I would. Well, somebody would pick you up. Of um, course. Why would somebody pick us up in Sioux City? Well, they'll be able to do a better job than we did. Why would someone pick us up in Sioux City? <laughs> Why? Because we have a 20 share? Because we have a big following there? Because we've proven for the last five years that we can garner an audience? Would that be why? I think so. Okay. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, all these programming ideas here, they blow. Okay. Beatles, Beatles archives, Fab Four Fridays, afternoon trivia quiz. Same old stuff. Are you kidding me? That's an insult, man. That is a true insult. We're doing something that's innovational, something that is avant-garde, something that can be heard on no other station in Sioux City. We've done, we've done everything that you have asked us to do, and you're pulling out in the middle of the night like the Baltimore Colts. Mm -hmm. Well, since we've been loyal to you, we, you can't just say, well, we wish you good luck, we'll do fine on the No, you know, you know why I can't? Because of the way you handled this. Because you're not man enough to pick up the phone and call me, call my agent, call my network. i got to find out about it from a client. Well, what if it had gone the other way? What if you guys changed your network and then all of a sudden huh. we're out? Hold on. Know? You wouldn't have been out. And you, first off, you don't know that. But you wouldn't have been out. But what if you had? Well, we sure as hell wouldn't have sent you a letter and waited until you were on vacation because we didn't have the balls to confront you that's, that's and tell right. you what the deal is. 
And it's a moot point, man. And it really is, when it comes right down to it, as regarding the way you did it, it's an issue of balls, isn't it? I'm sure that's true. Yeah, well, that's great. I'm, I hope you're proud of that. I'm not. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, you son of a bitch. I don't ever forget. I never, never, never forget. You're on my list. Your manager's on my list. The station is on my list. I've been in this. I've been this, in this business since you were a drop down your mom's leg. I will make it. Listen, I don't care what I have to do. I'll make it my goal. If I have to quit my network job to come to Sioux City to do a local show, I will do that to to make sure that I beat your ass in the ratings and that you're out of this business. And that's after I sue your ass and win in court for breach of contract. So you better take a good look at that contract this weekend. Take a good long look at it. And then take a good long look at our ratings history. And then take a listen to what you've said on our radio show today. Because I'm take, taping it and I'm transcribing it. And then listen to your customers. Oh, that's the one that he won't do that, Buzz. Well, they haven't done that, obviously. We've been... We, we, We've got people say they call the station, they have people hanging up on them, being rude to them. I hear your phone's ringing off the hook there right now. You're a disgrace, man. You're the Robert Ursay of radio. And it won't stop. Our listeners won't stop calling you. I had a good thing going here. I had a real good thing going here. I'm going to have a big party the day that you get fired from KKMA. Okay. I mean that, man. I mean that, Dave Rudin. I seriously mean that. And we will be back on in Sioux City. And it will be the Dave Rudin show every single day. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I wish you guys luck. I hope. You I don't wish you any luck at all. That's okay. I wish. I you wish you no I, luck I, at all because I, you're not. You're less. Soon. You're less than a man. Hey, Dave. Yes. You, you've been just as honest in this phone conversation as you have been with this entire process. Congratulations. How can you look yourself in the mirror, man? How does it feel to be less than a man? Uh, please answer that. How does it feel to be less than a man? It feels bad. Oh, God. I'll oh, forget it. All right. Listen, my agent's name is Donald Ephraim. So when you see the stationery, Ephraim and Partners, LTD, North Michigan Avenue, Chicago, you'll know that inside will be all the legal papers for you and your general manager and whatever company it is that owns your station. Because you're the guy that we're going to have to make an example out of. Because it ain't going to be that easy, man, to just pull the rug out on us. You just can't do it like that. You can't do it like that. You don't treat people like that. You wouldn't like to be fired with no notice a week before Christmas, would you? Well, I'm sure that's happened to lots of people. But you wouldn't like it, would you? Well, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you like to be in the position to do something about it if some rat bastard fired you a week before Christmas with no notice? After you've done an exemplary job for that employer for five years. Wouldn't you love to be able to put the screws on him? To take him to court, to sue him? When you had a legal binding contract with him that doesn't run out for over a year. Wouldn't you like that, to be able to do that? Wouldn't that be some vindication if you were fired a week before Christmas? I guess I don't know. Hmm. A lot of I don't knows, Dave. You're a piece of work. Well, it's obvious I don't know. I mean... You're a piece of work, man. Hmm. But uh, uh, if I heard you correctly earlier, you said you'd give a good reference to us to whatever station picks us up. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All right, well, I'll, I'll write you down on our reference sheet then. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Look for our legal action. And I swear to God, I'm not kidding about that. Absolutely not kidding. I throw a lot of money at this problem, man. I'll hire a lot of lawyers. Lots of big lawyers, all of them Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. Been good talking to you. Happy holidays. Hope, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for clearing that up for us, Dave. Hope Santa's good for good to you. And thanks for answering all of our questions and being a stand-up guy. We were certainly confused before this conversation started. Now you cleared everything up for us. Okay. All right. Merry Christmas. You can hang up now, Dave. Go answer some of those. Other, I'm sure you want to hang up on some of our listeners that are calling you right now. Goodbye. Because that's Bye. your way. Have you had enough? Hang up the phone, please. You want a little more, Dave? Okay, 
Yeah. Dave? Yes. We we said I'm goodbye. Sorry. I was talking to somebody else. Yeah, right. right. Well, hang up, please. Okay. Good night. <laughs> well, that explains that. I don't get it, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the I'll jury. I'll never get it. It's the, it. Every time something like this happens, I don't think it can get any worse. I don't think it can get any more insane. This is the worst ever. This doesn't make any... No answers. What I, the worst ever. What I think I heard was a guy who's uh, underneath a guy who's made all these decisions. It didn't sound like he was really behind the decisions that were made, but uh, being, you know, close to Christmas, he wasn't about to say no, anything. Uh, no, no, you're giving him too much credit. That's, that's, that's no way. way. No way. I mean, that guy, believe credit. me, you could hear, you know, just read between the lines and hear some of the little subtleties that he had in there. Believe me, he had a lot to do with it. Uh, all right. Lousy, whoever decided it. Okay. Well... I really meant what I said, and I know you're with me. Absolutely. This is going to be the one. Sure. You know, got to do it sometime. This is going to be the one. Mm -hmm. God knows we've been sued plenty of times ourselves. It'd be nice to turn the tables for a change. You can't continue to do that. It's just not the way to do business. I mean, we'll take what that guy said and use it in the lawsuit also. Sure. Right? Have we been a success? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we have the ratings? Yes. Amazing. We've been loyal employees? Yes. Amazing. The big answer to everything was, I don't know. That's what he said. That was the, the I don't know. Or you have a point. You have a point. Unbelievable. He'd recommend us for another station. Figure right. it out. <laughs> and the, the, and the only reason I heard, we, it just, uh, we wanted to try something new. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It made, made no sense at all. I don't get it. Welcome to my nightmare, as Alice Cooper said. Wow. Unbelievable. Hey, folks. That's kind of what we deal with behind the scenes here, too. You, you just got a little taste of it. That's just luck of the draw we got, that son of a bitch. <laughs> Quick break, and then we'll come right back.